Hey, Missy. Hey, Shan. Hey, the toy. I hope y'all can hear me snacking. I'm over here eating some walnuts. Excuse me, guys. TMZ got better pictures. TMZ is hell. Let me go ahead and jump in here. Let's cut this music off, girl. We got a whole lot to talk about, y'all. Y'all saw the thumbnail. We was initially coming in here to talk about Dallas Cowboys, Dak Preston. I've been wanting to talk about this for at least a week now, but I kept pushing it off because we were talking about other things that we wanted to, you know, speak on. So it kind of got pushed to the back burner. And I wanted to talk about it today, baby. But I see Holly Weird is Holly Weirding. Y'all, what is going on? I already got it pulled up on the screen. If you guys hadn't seen it, I posted. I made a post on my community tab of three different um things that's going on. One was Portia, one was Russell Simmons, and the third was Diddy. But shit done got real for Diddy because they raided all his homes, honey. They got his son, son in handcuffs. It's going down, okay? Let me highlight some of y'all comments. Y'all know we usually start at the five minute mark, but I can't wait, baby. Mom, I, I, we got to get into it. I wish I would have pulled up TMZ because TMZ have a better picture. They have a better um zoom in of of the sun there um in handcuffs. Okay, I already shared the screen. Let me go. Let's see if I can get a little closer. If you haven't heard, you know, just a briefing. <laughs> Diddy, Los Angeles and Miami home was raided by Homeland Security as we speak. You know, it's going down as we speak. As we see here. Let me take in that off. mansion at the time that DHS or Department of Homeland Security entry into this mansion and onto this property and you saw the position of the heavily armed vehicles and those very expensive luxury cars that are parked oh, right the, on that driveway right, right there. Yeah. So clearly a, a very different site than we're used to seeing. But uh, there you see some of the people that were inside that investigators by people from the Department of Homeland Security. I could see they're getting their pictures taken as well. So oh my God. maybe they, they don't know uh, who, you know, they're looking for or, or who they, they have in front you of them at this point. But again, part of the process of gathering information as to who in particular was on the grounds at the time that they made entry into during this raid. So uh, if we do have a vantage point from the ground there, I'm not sure if we have a ground people that were inside that mansion at the time that DHS or Department of Homeland Security made entry into this mansion and onto this property. And you saw the juxtaposition of these heavily armed vehicles I ran it back again I didn't know and those up, very expensive luxury cars that are parked right on that drive. Hold on, let me get a better.
people that were inside that mansion at the time that DHS or Department of Homeland Security made entry into this mansion and onto this property. And you saw the juxtaposition of these heavily armed vehicles and those very expensive luxury cars that are parked right on that driveway right there. So clearly a, a very different sight than we're used to seeing. But uh, there you see some of the people that were inside that mansion at the time of the raid. They are being talked to by investigators, by people from the Department of Homeland Security. I could see they're getting their pictures taken as well. So. Maybe they, they don't know. Know uh, who you know they're looking for, or, or who they have in front of them at this point. And that they made an edge point from the ground there. I'm not sure if we have a ground people that were inside that mansion. Okay, starting over again. Like your ranch. <laughs> we can't have her. Um, let me pause this. We can't have her deleting up, deleting my subscribers. Um, <laughs> I don't think you're timed out. Can you please send a message, Shan? Can you please send a message? Listen here, this is the second time you done did this to um Shan, Miss E. Hold on. Let me send her a minute. Oh, there she go. <laughs> I was just messaging her on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take her ranch, Shan. <laughs> Y'all, what do y'all think about this? What's going on in Hollywood? Do y'all think this is connected with the the S trafficking investigation that he has going on now? And your boy 50 Cent has posted, y'all. Y'all know he is the biggest, the number one troll ever, in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> I don't want him coming over here, baby, because I may be like Tierra Marie, baby. I can't pay him. Now, it's not Diddy. <laughs> 50 Cent says, now, it's not Diddy do it. It's Diddy done. They done come like that <laughs> unless they got a case. What do y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> she says she's sorry, Shan. <laughs> Yay, yes. I'm happy she's not out because I was going to have to send her the link so she can come up here and talk until her time out was gone or block or whatever go ahead you guys had going on. Said her Auntie Shan going to put her in time out. Oh, that's crazy. Homeland Security wonder if he's out of the country. Well, baby, you heard they not safe out of the country because Russell has been served. If you hadn't heard, he has been served. So it's like, baby, you ain't safe. You ain't safe. You ain't safe. You ain't safe. I, that out of the country stuff not not going uh, going to make it anymore. I don't know what is going on. I finally watched Nickelodeon documentary. Please do. She has been acting up. <laughs> oh my lord. Let me get back to the post. I had to go see what 50 Cent had posted, and he is on the case, baby, like Hong Kong fooey. Okay. So, what the shade room is reporting, and that is the clip that I used, is from the shade room. Thanks to the lady, Lady Bug, that sent this to me because I was in transit on my way coming home, and I don't have my phone out unless I'm talking on it. I have to put my phone up because I will be trying to scroll at the red light, about to bump somebody, about to wreck out. So I put my phone up while I'm driving, unless I'm talking because I can have it on Bluetooth. So what the um, the shade room has reported is um, law enforcement sources say 
agents working for Homeland Security are reporting that there was a raid at all his properties or just say his Los Angeles and his Miami property, okay? We saw the helicopters. We saw the choppers were out there because they're saying they reported that the helicopters were flying overhead. Local law enforcement was also present. Authorities are on the property walking through the house with guns. Oh, excuse me. Power piles drawn and people are being questioned in front of the house. It is unclear if Diddy is there, but we did see um, two of his sons, um, Justin. Hold on, I'm trying to get to the other one. Justin and Christian was there at the home. Three men are in handcuffs outside the estate. Two of them seem to be allegedly Christian and Justin allegedly. And according to reports, the raids were a result of the S trafficking allegations. It is unclear whether Diddy was there at the raid. Okay, I was trying to read through it so I don't be um, sounding repetitive. Now, I used to live in the hood, baby. I know about the alphabet boys, but I ain't never seen Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> we know about the alphabet boys, baby. TPD. <laughs> TPD, baby. The FBI. <laughs> the FED. But I don't know about Homeland Security, guys. I ain't never seen them in the hood. And on top of this, Cassie Lawyer um, made a statement, y'all. Cassie Lawyer releases a statement. Amit, the Homeland Security rating, Diddy's home. Let's see what they said, guys. Oh, this is a quote. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. And that's in quotation, out quotation. <laughs> Miss E, I'm going to get to you in one moment. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Dang, they are coming for them. Isn't Russell in Bali? Yes. And they had him served in Bali. Baby, do you think Usher um, dropped the because Usher was over there visiting him as a recent baby. And now the people done served him over in Bali. Is Usher a snitch? Do they have extradition with the U.S.? Baby, they probably had some young, hot, and <laughs> tempting, <laughs> some PYT baby over there. And he was looking, and they was like, you been served. <laughs> I'm just cutting up, y'all. Dang, Diddy, in high school, you was the man, homie. Now he a wankster, okay? <laughs> in my 50 cent voice. He gonna be hardly shaking in that jail cell, girl. <laughs> but leave the kids out of it, okay? All jokes aside, I do hate that the kids is going through this. I do too, Miss E. They will serve you anywhere. <laughs> TT <laughs> Hey wow How you doing sis So you mean to tell me Silver claims can become Criminal as well Listen up Sonya <laughs> Sonya can you hear me <laughs> Usher done dropped the dime on him TT Usher gave up on Addie Hmm. Maybe they put one of those um those what what y'all iPhone people have those little trackers. Maybe they drop one of them in Usher's luggage. <laughs> Let me ask Sylvia over there. <laughs> one of those tags. 
Usher probably got all the tea. He was over there smiling extra hard. Okay, showing all his teeth assist, Miss E. <laughs> Well, we see uh, 50 Cent has entered the chat. We saw that um, <laughs> Cassie's lawyers entered the chat. We just got to stay tuned, guys, and see how this thing plays out. I'm going to have to go ahead and subscribe to me some type of legal um, document, baby, retriever. Um, I have to see which one is the best so I can be getting these documents to see what's really going on so I can know for myself and share it with you guys, of course. And, I would, and even though I'm on here making jokes, you know, I do not take um any type of abuse um, lightly um over here okay which is what we were going to talk about anyway but i had to um address this before we got into what we are actually here for <laughs> hey planning mimi <laughs> i'm great i've been working in in the bushes in the replay game thank you so much for all your support yeah miami is still keeping her distance you know we from florida miss e baby we from florida we running like Santana, baby. You know when Santana was up in there with um, what's his little boyfriend name on um Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? It started with a Z. I can't think of it. And they were up in the club up in um Atlanta, and something broke off, baby. You know Santana from Florida, the way he was running up out of there. Santana was a running, running. Okay, I forgot his little boyfriend name, y'all. I know it started with a Z, but I cannot think of it. You know one thing about us Floridians, we know, we know when the time to go. We know how to lay low. <laughs> yes, Miss E, Justin, and um, Christian were handcuffed. And there's another person, because there were actually three people handcuffed, but of course they zoomed in, you know, on his kids. It's an unfortunate situation. I hate the kids are getting, I mean, I don't understand why they're being handcuffed. I could see if they were being called in because there was, Zell, yes, Zell. <laughs> I could see if they were um, being called because something, a crime was actually happening at the home now and they needed to, you know, get everything under control. But you guys are acting on a search warrant, um, doing a raid. Now, this is a raid right here. Um. For Sylvia's daughter over there, this is a raid. So, I mean, I don't understand why they would have them, you know, handcuffed and obtained like they're about to be arrested. I don't think that's fair, but I'm going to let them handle their business and I'm going to stay over here and handle lay T-Bugs um, business. Thank you, Miss E, because I could not think of his little boyfriend name. Baby, Santana was running, running. We Floridians, we know when to hold and when to fold, baby. We don't have time to stick around and see what's going on. So I already know my um young Miami is hiding, hiding, baby. She laying low. <laughs> She's no stranger to um to the law. So um, just to circle back around, Russell Simmons was left stunned after being served with a defamation lawsuit in Bali from one of his SA accusers, okay? So I don't know if he went live or what, <laughs> but he's been served, okay, in my B2K voice, okay? Simon and Portia, did y'all hear about that T? Simon say, um, Portia pulled up with the goon squad, baby. At their marital home, he had to call the popo to maintain peace. So we, I wanted to also discuss that because I posted it on my community thing, and it's something I saw earlier. So it sounds like to me, Holly Weir is really um weirding out right now. So much going on.
And I do wish, you know, the victims receive justice. You know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Is she still beefing with Nene? <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to be beefing forever, Miss E, because Nene felt like she stopped her bag, you know, and I guess it's a, a thin line between business and pleasure. Like, we may not be cool off, of, you know, in real life, but when, when it comes to cooling, I could be cool with anybody because y'all already know I tell y'all I do something strange for the change. So, you know, I know how to go to work and be professional and work with people that I do not like, you know, handle my business, collect my coins and go home. Now, if I see you in Chick-fil-A, you know, after work or my lunch break, it's, it's all, you know, it's back to me not liking you. But once I clock in on the job, I do know how to uh, remain professional. And some people don't. I don't know what um, all transpired behind the scenes with Nene and Portia. But I feel like when it comes to work, um, if you don't feel threatened, like um, like physical harm is going to come to you, you know, physical s, you know, mental, then I can work. I can work with anybody because I'm there for the check, you know. But even if she's still double dating. <laughs> with your ex-husband and your new boo. Yes, because he's my ex for a reason. Holly Weird is small when it comes to the Black people. You know, we don't have a lot of opportunities. So I have to come in and show up and show out and go home. You know, it is what it is. The circle is small. Portia was, uh, was accused of dating and marrying one of their ex-castmates falling so if you can do it you can dish it out when it comes on that end you definitely should be able to take it just a double date with um simon and his new boo and i mean we're working you know you know how you gotta do miss e we working now, I ain't breaking bread with you, but we working, working. We have to do what we have to do. I'll suck it up, Miss E. That's my answer. I will suck it up. So I'm sure all the celebrities that um have a little beef or a little issue with Diddy will be coming out speaking like they did with Cassie, you know, filed her complaint, her civil complaint in one and cashed out. So we will stay tuned on that one, okay? So we can move on to that. <laughs> this is, um, I got to regroup because this is not, I didn't really come on here to talk about Diddy and the others, but, you know, since that was breaking news, I did want to address it because I was, you know, um, one of y'all sent it to me and we wanted to talk about it. So we can move on from there. We can move on to the reason that we are here, which is, opposite which is what i was trying to do because i always come on here talking bad you know on the other end bashing the men talking my ish this one was going to be a different scenario where we came on here and talked about a man being an actual victim you know you know because he was accused of something um that he did not do allegedly so i was trying to come on and like do something different but unfortunately diddy took over that but we're gonna regroup and we're gonna put it back together and we're gonna get into it let me get that document up for you guys as well before i get to talking i want to share it with you guys let me stop sharing that one Hold on one moment, y'all. Oh, heck, I don't have a name for that. I think it's this. Oh, it is. 
It is. All right, y'all. This document that I have up now is the document filed in court by Dak Prescott. I did not know his real name was Rain until I started doing research for this. So Rain Dakota Prescott is the plaintiff. Victoria Shores, Bethel. Um, the last name I, I say is Zahai and Yoel Zahai. I'm not really sure how to pronounce the last name. I should have did a Google thing, but I didn't. Um, they are the plaintiffs. One defendant, defendant one, I will say Victoria is the author, okay? Bethel and Yoel Zai, Zai. <laughs> they are the attorneys, but Mr. Prescott added all of them into his um, petition to the court. Okay, so here at the top, y'all see the filing date is March 11th, 2024. That's the filing information up there in the top right-hand corner. And then we have the case number. So if you guys want to go and look up the case on your own, feel free. I didn't put a stamp or anything on this, so you can actually use this if you like. What? It's time to switch it up for me. What she do to that? Wow. Let me give you the tea on this, okay? Um, Just real brief. If you don't know, because I don't know if everybody on here watch, you know, watch sport, football in particular, Rain Dakota Prescott, he goes by that is the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. He actually just renewed his contract for $160 million, okay? He filed a lawsuit against, I'm going to just say Miss Shores. He claimed that she tried to extort him out of $100 million a hundred million dollars y'all a <laughs> hundred million dollars by allegedly saying that he essayed her when he was a within his rookie season so this was his first year in the nfl and i believe if i did not write the date down but i believe that was in 2017 guys but i have a document it is in the document so this incident allegedly occurred in 2017 Miss Shores waited to have him um, served uh, or to bring this um, assault um, issue back up now in 2024, okay? So this is not something that's been going on, you know, for years undercover, you know, now it's just surfacing. No, that's not what happened. This is 2024 news, okay? So Dak filed his suit again, March 13, 2024, in Collin County, Texas. He named the three women, Miss Shores. I don't know if Bethel is a man or woman, so I'll just say Bethel in your L Zahai. So he is suing all three of them, okay, for what he is alleging was extortion. So what Mr. Prescott is claiming, <laughs> I think I may go with last names here, okay, is around February 13th, the representatives, his representatives received a correspondence from a woman's legal counsel accusing that he, Mr. Prescott, essayed her around February of 2017. I believe the date is February 2nd, 2017, when he was in his rookie season at the Dallas Cowboys. The woman requested $100 million in exchange for foregoing criminal charges and going public with the accusations, right? The allegations, excuse me. And I do have that document um, that they sent to his um, legal representation. 
So that's just to sum it up a little bit for you guys, give y'all a little background before we do get into the document. I'm not going to read the document word for word, um, but before we get into it, I if you watch my channel, you already know how I feel about SA. I do not wish that on anyone. No one should have to endure that type of trauma. But like I go hard for the SA victims, I have to come back when someone has been accused, falsely accused at that, and speak on that as well. I should be able to speak on both sides. And that's what I was trying to do today, but Diddy kind of messed me up. So I'm trying to get back on track. And this this really hurts, you know, the community, you know, the SA victims, because this takes away from people that have had this happen to them. You know, it's already hard for them to come forward. Then when you come forward, you are made, you know, you're victimized more for speaking out. You're embarrassed. You go through all these things. And for someone to come and falsely accuse someone, it takes away from people believing victims, especially when it comes to wealthy people, wealthy men, athletes. It makes people not want to believe them because they feel like people are always trying to extort them and get money out of them when they willingly, you know, has sex with someone. So I do, I would like to say that before we get into the documents. Let me read some of y'all comments too. <laughs> I mean, I haven't heard anything about this one. Uh, Miss E, a hundred, a hundred million, a <laughs> hundred million dollars, Miss E. Oh, wow. See, this is what you do when you truly feel you are innocent. You don't settle in 15 minutes. Absolutely. Some chicks would do anything for money. Me too, sis. I'm a victim and didn't say a word for over 25 years. Right. And it took courage for you to come forth and then for someone to accuse someone and it doesn't and like you said 25 years it doesn't matter if it, if you came for it the next day or 25 years later it's the point that you came for and then the way they came for is just sending him a letter which won't get to exhibit a you know outlining what they wanted and i'm like my i mean i don't know if it happened or not he's saying it didn't um we may find out more information now that he's, you know, put a petition in and this, they are going to have to go to court. We may be able to see, you know, additional information or documentation or proof or whatever from Ms. Shores. But right now, I just only have what um presented in his petition. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. That's right. Wow. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Say no longer a victim. I flipped that ish. Yes, take back your power. Yes, definitely sorry that happened to you. Okay, y'all. Is that format good for y'all? Can I remove that part? Because I really don't need it. I don't see an X up there. Uh oh. I'm scared to click on something because I, <laughs> I don't really need that menu. Can I close? Oh, yes. That's what I wanted to do. All right, y'all. I'm not going to be looking at the comments. I'm just going to try to read. Well, you know what? I have it on paper form, but I want it to be scrolling up so you guys can see. Hey, I said what I said. Welcome, sis. I actually have it in paper form, so I can read from the paper. Ever since I be having these sinus issues, my voice be going in and out. Bear with me, y'all. <laughs> hey, TT, welcome back. You probably already been here in the bushes, but okay. We already went over like at the top right. That is the filing information. It, this document was filed on March 11, 2024 at 3.58 p.m., okay? in Collin County, Texas, okay? I didn't go through everything. You guys can see 
the case number is there. You can see the case number um, if you want to pull this document up on your own. If you want to use my document, you feel free to do that as well. The plaintiff is Mr. Prescott. The defendants is Ms. Shores, Bethel Zahi, <laughs> Yoel Zahi. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I was not familiar with the last name, so I'm trying to I'm trying to sound it out, but forgive me if that is incorrect. Okay, so let's get down into the plaintiff's original petition. It's that part in um in that border part. And it says, to the honorable judge of said court comes now plaintiff Rain Dakota Prescott, Prescott or plaintiff and files this original petition claiming of Victoria Shores and her attorney, Bethel and Yoel Zahi, <laughs> together defendants and in support thereof would respectfully show the court as follows. All right. Never mind, you figured it out, Miss E. Yes, Lady Bud, this is an exclusive. Having said this in anyone, haven't seen this in anyone else's chat. I was five years old and I'm now 52. Oh my God. Oh wow, I'm glad you were brave enough to take your power back. Yes, amazing, amazing strength. Okay, so let's get down to, let me move this down for you guys. I may have to toggle back and forth, but that's okay. Want to go to this introduction paragraph. This case arises out of blatant attempt by Miss Shores and her legal team to extort plaintiff Dak Prescott by weaponizing. Oh, sorry, y'all, I had a bird. <laughs> Paintedly false yet hideous sexual assault allegations with no basis in reality. Considering the following expert excerpt, excuse me, the following excerpt from defendant. Extraordinary letter. Extraordinary, extortionary, excuse me, extortionary letter attached here to as exhibit A. We have exhibit A, guys, so we will look at that. Ms. Shore is willing to forego pursuing criminal charges along with disclosing the information to the public in exchange for compensating her for mental anguish she has suffered. Ms. Shore's damages are valued in the sum of 100 million. Uh-oh. Miss E, did that answer your question? A <laughs> hundred million dollars, y'all. I'm trying to scroll up so y'all can go along with me. Okay. Number two, we read paragraph number one. Now, paragraph number two, sexual assault is a despicable crime that no person should ever endure. Mr. Prescott, a new father to his baby girl, has great empathy for survivors of SA and believes fervently that all perpetrators of such crimes should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. With that said, Mr. Mr. Prescott has never engaged in any non-consensual sexual behaviors with anyone ever, 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 okay? Indeed, defendant false claims in this regard undermine the courage of actual SA survivors everywhere as well as the legitimacy of the horrific traumas that they have endured. We kind of already went over um, 
paragraph three, where they're just stating things about him, his professional career. So I'm going to skip that. This is a 15 page document, so I'm going to try to get to um, the most important things. Hey, Pure Intentions. We're going to skip to paragraph number four. Now, at the height of Mr. Prescott's successful success, excuse me, <laughs> I need to start trying to read the chat. Now, at the height of Mr. Prescott's success, defendants and her legal team have unleashed a campaign of extortion and defamation, threatening to go to the public with a completely fabricated story of sexual assault, S.A., and nearly a decade ago and demanded that Mr. Prescott immediately pay $100 million in exchange for her silence. Defendant horrible lies not only threatened to destroy the legitimate legacy of a great man and cost him tens of millions of dollars, but defendant conduct in, is criminal. The, the defendant conduct is criminal. As such, Mr. Prescott has reported defendant criminal ac actions to the appropriate authorities and will continue to cooperate fully in their investigation. Furthermore, Mr. Prescott is forced to file the instant case to bring the truth to light, defend his new family, promote our society's collective progress in support of legitimate survivor SAs. He's speaking out for the other real victims. As a show of support for legitimate survivors of SA, Mr. Prescott has committed to donating any and all recovery obtained as a result of this lawsuit to Joyful Heart Foundation, whose vision is a world free of SA domestic violence and child abuse. Okay. A lot of this stuff is redundant. It's it's a repeat. I'll go to the clause of action and then I'll show you guys exhibit number A. I'll catch up with y'all. <laughs> Pure, <laughs> Pure intentions. I'm not reading none of your comments until I get to exhibit A. <laughs> Cause of action, defamation, and slander. Okay, this is um number 16. Plaintiff incorporates by referencing each and every allegation contained in the paragraph above as if the same were set forth in full hearing. <laughs> Defendant published false statements purporting to be facts <laughs> about Mr. Prescott to third person in Mississippi State University, University <laughs> Mississippi State University by asserting Mr. Prescott engaged in SA of defendant Shores on or around February 2nd, 2017. So she don't have a definite date, but it was on or around February 2nd, 2017. Defendant statement referred to Mr. Prescott by name and referred to his status as a public plaintiff by discussing his encounterage. No privilege absolutely or conditional attached to these false and malicious statements. Defended false statements and omission caused damage to Mr. Prescott's reputation. Okay. So there was a third party that she also told about this at the um, Mississippi State University. So a lot of this is just, you know, the legal genre, but it's very repetitive. And I think you guys get the, the gist of what's going on. So let's move on to what page is this on? Exhibit A, so y'all can see the document.
this is the clause of action, guys, that I skipped to read because a lot of the information, like I said, is redundant. Okay, here is exhibit A. This is the law office. And I hope this, um, <coughs> excuse me, law office actually did try to get some additional information from her before taking her on as a client in. Let me scroll up. Taking her on as a client and actually, you know, sending this document to Zach's, um, Zach, Dax Prescott's legal representation. Damn, everybody caught up. Dak and Diddy <laughs> and Russell Simmons. He's been served. I said what I said. All she saw was dollar signs. Thank you all. I am thriving. I buried it as if it didn't happen. But when I talk about it, let me see what prayer talk about. <laughs> what did Dak do now? <laughs> I don't understand why these dudes have to take some <laughs> coochie when there are more than enough women will gladly let them have their way. Dak sucks. The cowgirl sucks even more. Pure Intentions is a Giants fan. I think it's a gi the Giants. The struggle is real. Some are telling the truth and some are trying to get a bag. Right. And we don't have, you know, any proof. I don't know what type of um information she provided to her attorneys you know prior to them you know putting this document together and sending it to mr prescott's um legal representation but i hope i don't know if they're friends of hers and they just took her word or she actually had you know um a old text message a video or something we don't know uh right now he is the you know he is the plaintiff that probably guilty and jerry knew about it in my opinion the cowboys can't win for losing <laughs> him and jerry out there going out <laughs> Her, him and Jerry out there giving out DNA, Lord Jesus. This will not help them win the Super Bowl. <laughs> See, that's why I want to read her comments. Didn't Jerry just have to do a DNA test for Benjamin Button, baby? Woo! Do tell, do tell. I have not um cared for Jerry since the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, with the kneeling. He rubbed me the wrong way. So I have forever put him on my forever don't F with list, okay? Because it's more about power. Okay. So you guys see we pulled up exhibit A. Y'all saw the letterhead, Law Office of Bethel T. Zai. What happened to Yoel? Because <laughs> Yoel was also listed. So I don't see Yoel name on the letterhead, okay? So this document was drafted on January 16th, 2024. It was email. You see the email information. They have redacted some of the, you know, information that they did not want the public to see. Uh, so you're wondering why there's blackouts that information has been redacted so they have when we move down to you know past on the left side where we see Dak Prescott his address you know they left his city and state out there in zip code but <laughs> It says R.E. regarding Victoria Bailey Shores, S.A. 
date of incident, February 2nd, 2017. Dear Mr. Prescott, our law firm has been retained to represent, I'm just going to say Ms. Shores, for injuries she sustained as a result of SA committed by you on, on or about February 2nd, 2017. So again, they don't even have a official date. You know what I mean? You and Miss Shore became acquainted through her employment and exchange information. Communication endured between you both via a Snapchat and you invited her to hang out. Thereafter, on or about February 2nd, 2017, you and Miss Shore, along with two members of your entourage, and a couple additional females met at a private location. At some point, you and Miss Shore, along with two members of your entourage, entered your black SUV style vehicle. You directed Miss Shore to the furthest back row so you can so you could all head to a uh, undisclosed location. On the road to that location, you exposed your genitalia. Ms. Shores did not want to engage in sexual intercourse and made sure to verbalize her wishes. Afterwards, the car came to a stop at your destination. One, once this occurred, everyone got out of the car except you and you further signaled to one of your entourage members to leave you and Mr. Shores alone. Mrs. Shore, excuse me, and Mrs. Shores alone. At this point, you use physical force in SA, Miss Shores. Y'all see that sentence by. I'm gonna skip that one. Miss Shores had to live with that pain and trauma for seven years. It affected her relationship with her fiance and her everyday existence so much that she had to attend therapy and counseling. And, and will require further therapy and counseling. She has suffered mental anguish that is unimaginable dealing with this trauma of being a SA, a victim. Despite the tragic event, she is willing to forego pursuing criminal charges along with disclosing this information to the public. In exchange for compensating her for mental anguish, she has suffered Miss Shore's damage <laughs> are valued at the sum of a hundred million dollars. You have until February 16th, 2024 to respond to this demand letter. To discuss this matter, please have your attorney reach out to us. Please direct all communication exclusively to our office. We hope to resolve this matter privately and amicable and amicable and look forward to working with you. Okay. I'm assuming it was electronic signature because um, there, there's no written signature, so they probably docu-signed it. So that is Exhibit A, guys. I'll scroll down a little bit because I kind of left it right there so you guys can see the body of Exhibit A. The header the letter here looks like an online letter here. I'm just saying. Not Snapchat. Yes, this was 2017. Snapchat me that. <laughs> Miss E. Oh my Lord. Is Miss Shores a clear person? I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't look her up. More than likely, I believe his baby mama is too. Oh my God. So it's given that y'all don't believe him. <laughs> I mean, if she's been in counseling, y'all, she may have some documentation to um to say that this actually happened you know um you can subpoena medical records but i don't think he will have to subpoena them because she will gladly you know um turn them over
Let me go and see if he got Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. In my opinion, all his chicks are clear. His mama clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shan for letting us know that like i said i'm not a cowboys fan i don't really keep up with them okay y'all so that is the document okay i'm gonna stop sharing <coughs> Jerry will bail him out. <laughs> well, we'll just have to watch and see how it goes. Like, of course, we don't want, you know, anyone to be a victim of SA, but we nor do we want anyone to be accused, you know, falsely accused of um being SA either. But I don't think we have enough information at this point to really like give our opinion i did just want to put that out there one because i'm always talking about women and what women go through bashing this though just bashing men in general so i wanted to put forth the other side when a man is falsely accused i've talked about diddy i've talked about russell simmons like this was kind of something different. We do have a document, but we don't know what actually happened because this was in 2017. We're now in 2014. But if she has been in counseling, she may have some, you know, she may have been, you know, um, been working through her therapy and that would be proof in my opinion okay so here is the baby mama and their little baby that they just had right there and he just renewed his contract for um 160 million dollars and she's asking for 100 of that so he will only get 60. <laughs> So this is Dak, if you've never seen him. Oh, I got a lot of comments. <laughs> All jokes aside, I definitely pray for the victim. I think the dollar amount is crazy, but who am I to tell her how much to ask for PTSD is real? I agree with you, Miss E. I believe him. If he's willing to do all that, though, right. I sympathize. If she is a victim, I would not wish that on anyone. Jerry will bail out any of his players <laughs> out for anything. We all have seen that. They better not kneel down, baby. She may have needed counseling before him, too. That's true. She is see-through clear. <laughs> I can't stand. <laughs> well, he bailed out the champion player, Dow, and got him a Super Bowl, so I don't know. <laughs> Dak, okay, okay. <laughs> she better come with some hard evidence. Him and Jerry ain't going down easily. Right, right, absolutely. Sometimes it's about the perception. If she perceives it as assault, it very well could be right. And they were, you know, she said this happened outside in a car. They, you know, it, you know, she wasn't at his home or a hotel room, or he wasn't at her home. Um, I don't know, you know, what happened afterwards because she didn't go into detail because she was riding with him. And he signaled for his entourage, you know, to go ahead, go ahead and go in. And he stayed in the vehicle with her. So I don't know if he, she remained with him for the rest of the night, rode back with them to the school or what. 
TT, he was old boy number one cheerleader, the running back. What's his name? A few years ago. Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin is old. <laughs> it's not Michael Irvin. I don't know how to make that go away. Okay, there it is. Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott. Oh, I just realized you said a few years ago. <laughs> Baby, I was watching when um uh, Michael Irvin was playing. I'm like, see, now those are the players that I actually do know. This is just one of those things. We got to see how this play out. We got to get both sides of the story. We got to get all the facts before we could, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, okay, before we could kind of chime in on it. <laughs> he couldn't do no wrong. <laughs> this is his full name. <laughs> So let me get off of his Instagram. We just wanted to take a peek, a sneak peek, and see what's going on. Is this his mom right here, Shan, in the middle? Let me blow her up. Yes. Happy 60th birthday to the greatest to ever be called mom. Enjoy your heavenly birthday with Jace while Tad and I continue to keep your legacy pushing. I know on a day like today, actually every day, we are all together, and that's all the comfort I need. You're always missed, and not one memory will ever go forgotten. One of my favorite videos I'm showing because I still hear her beautiful, I love you, and the rest are unforgivable moments. From her beauty to my senior night to hanging with all three of your boys and eating crawfish, <laughs> celebrate the right way and if you know her that means with laughter and love oh that's so sweet oh that's her right there he does have his organization now stand up for cancer Many of you know I lost my dear mom to chlorelia cancer, and every day, is that like colon or something? I stand up in her honor through my foundation, Faith Fighting Finish 4, in honor of Mother's Day this Sunday. I started a fundraiser for Stand Up to Cancer to raise funds for important need. I don't know how to pronounce this. Colorectal cancer research. The money raised will support the next early career scientists who will work alongside Stand Up to Cancer, SU2C. <laughs> Well, one, I don't have my glasses on. S U two C. Oh, so that's really nice. Colorectal. I'll have to research that to see what it is. I have two co-workers right now. Their husbands have um colon cancer, and they're both um like stage three and stage four. All right, baby. <laughs> TT, stop. Then he cut Zeke loose like it was nothing. He was tired of him. What it seems like, if we give him opinions, I believe that till I don't. Okay. I'm I'm up in the air. I don't know. She passed away from cancer. TT, that's how Jerry roll. <laughs> yes, yeah, Shan, I agree. He is moving like someone who ain't going down for something he did not do. Right. I hope so, Shan. I don't want to give him my side. Give him the side eye. Okay. <laughs> She's coming for a big bag, a big bank. Don't yes, this is coming. 
Call the rectical. Okay, I kind of got it together towards the end, but I still wasn't sure. Thank you, Bank. Being in the bushes listening. Thank you, sis. Because I'm like, wait a minute. I don't think I'm saying it right. <laughs> So that's it on that, y'all. I'm 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 half and half. <laughs> I have to see more facts or see, you know, what type of evidence she presented that she felt that she was gonna get a hundred thousand dollars from this man to keep everything on the low low. But if I had to pick, I probably would lean a little bit to, uh, more towards uh, Mr. Prescott Dak, okay? If I had to, like, pick right now. But I just need to see more information. Yes, hey, bank. All right, y'all, that's all I had. We snuck in Diddy, we snuck in Russell, we snuck in Portia and Simon. Is there anything else going on before we end the live that y'all want to talk about? Do y'all want me to drop the link? I can drop the link too. She may get one of two if she get anything a million. <laughs> I can't stand her. <laughs> she said she not getting no hundred million. It don't sound like trying to negotiate with her either. He got his new baby, you know, too. So he got to think about that, even though he did just, you know, sign. Um, he, you know, signed um, an extension or whatever for $160 million. I don't even know how much time, if it's over three, four, five years. But we just going to wait and see. Oh, Miss E said she was thinking more like $10 million, I what I said. I just don't have enough evidence to like um be confident in <laughs> in actually picking a side right now. Y'all, why they say Diddy is being accused of fleeing to a secluded island during his home raid? I know Diddy did not leave the boys out there to be um detained. Yeah, they say Diddy private jet, Gulfstream G550 <laughs> N1 1969 S. I S six nine departed. <laughs> they got the numbers in all. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> hey Shan. Hey y'all. I didn't know if y'all wanted to come up or not, but I was like, let me just drop the link just in case. Girl, y'all the only adults on to talk to all day. Of course I'm coming up. <laughs> every time you drop that link, I'm gonna tap it. If I can talk, I'm gonna tap it, okay? Well, if I don't drop it, and this is not just to Shan, this is to anybody. Y'all tell me to drop that link. I ain't never scared. I ain't never scared. <laughs> I'm going to drop it. <laughs> Girl, they say Diddy done jumped on the on the jet, the private jet. They gave the number two like it's a license plate, baby. I can't be looking for that number while it's up in the air. Let me pull it up. I feel like they gave yes, Diddy the a <laughs> Hell, he may have ran to the store to get uh, Starbucks and, and his son son them calling the dad the people up in here. Them alphabet <laughs> boys up in here. <laughs> and that ninja went straight to, <laughs> to the airport. <laughs> well, he better call Russell, baby, because they saw, they say Russell was over there in Bali. <laughs> Bali, and they pulled up. I think they knew he wasn't going to be there. The fans ain't stupid. I hate that the kids were there. Yeah, that's what they do. My neighbors had got raided. We was being nosy. I was recording. Because um, they swear we was the only black people on the block at the time. And it wasn't us. 
that's a real raid right there. Um, you know, somebody said they got swatted. <laughs> <laughs> this how you get swatted. <laughs> Yeah, our neighbors got the fans ran up in there too. That's how I knew I knew it was the fans because they was in a bunch of regular cars. They had a couple flashing lights, but it was mostly regular cars. I was like, "Oh, what they doing next door? Mm-hmm, they always looking at us. What I ought to be looking at y'all?" <laughs> hey, it is what it is, Shane. But I think, honestly, as somebody knowing what it takes to get a warrant, just Cassie and the new allegations and the boy being in her, whatever, that's enough to get a warrant to go up in there and see what you can find. And by being Homeland Security, they move different for human trafficking because there is a, there's a, like a expeditiousness leave thing to it because if that's what's going on they got to get in and stop it right quick before the people disappear and people keep saying homeland security oh, I didn't even see y'all there. I'm over here just scrolling on Instagram how did he have time to get in the plane and flee Sorry, ladies. I think oh, he was no already gone baby see, all you got to do is make it to the airport like <laughs> no because homeland security no, they talking about when they was raiding his house how did he if they, if they was raiding his house, wouldn't they arrest him, Shane? No, see, this is what he I'm wasn't there. Listen, look at that. It say Diddy's plane departed Van Nuys Airport earlier in the day. Let me tell y'all something about Homeland Security. They know every plane, every train, yep. and every car leaving this country, yep. okay? Yep. Mm-hmm. So there's no way that anything attached to him moved and they didn't know it. That's gotta why. register that flight plan right and not only register for the flight plan his credit card's been used today they know where it's been used at these is the feds we talking about y'all in my opinion when, this is face this is face would they, the people. Would they, they notify him, was leaving. would they notify his lawyer to let them know that they fixing no. the coming raid before they do that or no. they just gonna show up they just show up and they show yep. up early and see the him in the door the feds too they don't come when it's light outside. That's why I said it's full of it. When they raided my neighbors, it was dusk because I was I had just, I had been gone from home like 15 minutes before they raided my neighbors. The FBI when they raided um the orange person, his people, dusk. Mm-hmm. Feds raided. He just dusk got a bomb reduction. Y'all saw he got a bomb reduction. <laughs> yeah, a big a, a big broke. reduction. I don't know why they, they know doing broke, that. Cause he broke. This one, Nesto, talking about. Black people broke and they get him. Uh, Nesto broke, then they bring his <laughs> ball down like that. <laughs> it's more of a money thing with him anyway than what it is. We can with, talk about that because that's more of a money thing, though. When it's just because it's the thing in New York is not a criminal case, it's a money case. Oh, okay. So, if well, I'm glad crime, they called Diddy. I'm glad they finally caught up with the Grim Reaper. But did and, they? Because let me tell you something. A warrant is a warrant to search, not arrest. I have not seen a warrant to arrest. I've, I just heard they raided his house. I well, that's good enough about, for me. But that's good enough mean, for me. Because he ain't. De- they ain't even, you know, he, at least they trying to do something. Because they ain't never tried oh. to do nothing to him. But what, what are they eyes, gonna find? As the feds running up in your stuff, they better have an arrest warrant. Because the feds don't move like that. This is a smoke screen if they ain't got no warrant to arrest. I'm telling y'all. That's how I feel about it. Because, bank, back me up, honey. I'm pretty sure you done seen. The feds ain't never ran up in nowhere without a warrant to arrest. Just a warrant to search. Cause, cause that's not real, how they yeah. operate. That's not so. If they just ran up in there with a search, cause listen, y'all gotta watch the details. What show find, and then I'll be satisfied with say they got a warrant to arrest. I'll be satisfied with a warrant to arrest. I'm not satisfied with you just running up in his house, cause he ain't that stupid. I hope. But they show me an arrest. Thing. It sound like the same tactic. We gonna get. We got probable cause. To go in and search, and whatever we find, we're gonna take it from there. So I bet Nesto, like, 
I bet Nesto like, ooh, wait, shit, I'm glad somebody else in trouble besides me. Don't you be on your way. I you know, bet Nesto you know, smiling. Bet Nesto smiling from ear to ear. I'm like, damn, I'm glad they off my head. <laughs> That's what he thinks. That's no, what he thinks. I ain't listened to the videos yet, but once I do, I will be commenting, homeboy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Here's my thing, though. It's like, what? I mean, if he got something in the house, then he then he deserves everything he gets because he's had plenty of time to get that's rid of anything. Why, that's why. But it was he houses, though, wasn't it? In Miami. So and, but he still had months to get rid of everything. Auntie, that's why I say this is a freaking smoke screen. Cause he they've been out here doing all this stuff and he ain't got rid of something in three in all these months. He ain't he got he, he, ain't, he ain't sent people through there to clean out his house in all these months. The people that he know he can trust, he ain't sent them he ain't sent the cleanup crew. Stop right. the people. This is a right. smoke but screen. The, but ain't, but ain't they gonna catch the cleanup crew? Want the queen up? Queen up, up, up to be the king. Nope. They were there, so nope. you know what? That laptop that was in there, oh, it's gone. You know that kind of stuff. I'm trying to figure out what exactly they're looking for. Any laptop well, maybe Kathy possessed told them what before it three, any laptop <laughs> didn't possess before three months ago is in the in the in the river as they flying over. They dropping it out to shoot. So hey, come on, like. maybe Cassie, maybe Cassie gave them all the nooks and crannies and, and corners they need to look into. But you know, oddly enough, Shannon, all of y'all, you we've seen weirder things. They like to hold on to trophies. And mm -hmm. you're right, though. I said what I said. What if it is something so minute that he thinks that he can hold on yeah. to it? So right. I wouldn't, you know. But I'm interested. I was like, okay, here we go again. And then Russell Simmons just still down there chilling in Bali. And that no, they served too. him. They served well, him. You, a, a, yeah, but is it a civil? Is it a civil warrant? Exactly. It is civil, but once he get here, but probably once they get him back over here, it's gonna be. Wow. How they gonna get but back do they over have extradition? Here? But do they have extradition in Bali? Let me, let me tell so. y'all something. It's easier unless you're looking for the unalive penalty to get somebody here on a criminal warrant than anything. So that civil crap is a. Again, smoke screen. I'm just, mm. y'all. I I swear I'm. I watch. Well, Shane, why do you think he's doing smoke screens? Cause look <laughs> who it is. I watched the feds move for decades, y'all. Decades, and I'm not talking about my decades of watching from the inside. I'm talking about the outside too. I've seen how the feds move in decades. Nothing they did to the orange man was un unlike how they moved. The feds mm -hmm. move how the feds move. This, I ain't satisfied. Not from the feds. Now, if, if uh, LAPD had ran up in there, okay. But the feds, no, I want more. I want more. They were at two locations, Shan. They ran Three. up in I want two. more. <laughs> they ran up in different states, girl, at the same time. That's how the feds do. Hello, and it went to different them. entities. One at Homeland Security no, and the in the FBI. That's, and the local, that's, and they, the local police department. Is that's well. nothing. I told y'all, my neighbor, the little boy next door got raided by the feds. It was the feds, our police, and Detroit police. That's nothing. Yeah. They have task force for this stuff. I need more. Because let me tell y'all what I would like to see in this case. I would have liked to see them going in there for specifics, knowing what you're looking for. The feds don't never operate on, let's go in and see. That's the local cowboys. No, the feds operate on what we know. I'm mad with the feds right now. Now, I've been mad with Nesto for months. Now, I'm mad with the feds because y'all ain't doing it right y'all mucking it up because this is y'all messing it up if y'all don't get nothing out of this y'all gonna hear me come back with even harder because i i think they mucking it up on purpose just like russell in my opinion let me put a banner up for these helpers <laughs> <laughs> no. i ain't even got no comeback <laughs> <laughs> So you said the smoke screen. So one, I guess they moved maybe because he was moving and they just a stall tactic, I guess. Is that what you're saying, Shan? Well, I he do like... have that civil case right now where the person is, are they still unknown? I know that mm -hmm. Diddy had filed something in court, 
you know, to make them um, reconsider that and publicize their name. But I don't know where that stands. At I don't think they ever released it. No, nah, they don't. When they when you file some, it could take them up to ninety days to respond. But it's it's just thirty to ninety days. Okay, it depends on um whatever. Okay, they Thank work because I know that it hasn't been that long. I think I may have saw that a few weeks ago, so it haven't been that so, long. In my I opinion, hope, they I wanted hope. to appease somebody, and they're moving on something. I hope they got something because I'm telling y'all, the fans don't just move when they ain't got nothing. This is a right. task force, like. This HT people, there's a task force. It involves the feds and Homeland Security. That's their thing. They have a unit for that. It's a task force. But for me, when task force move, they move on stuff. I really hope they not moving because all these people coming out want money. Hopefully, well, because what I said in the chat earlier is the feds supposedly been on him. So I hope that this is a part of that where they got something. Y'all better have something to go up in the well, and put them I on hope, the I hope they swallow up him <laughs> and swallow up him. Yes, I hope everybody gets swallowed up because I'm tired of all these men just going around here taking advantage of people, whether it's their pocket, you know, whether it's their pocketbook or their talent. And um, and then they just because they got so much money and power, they think they can just treat people any kind of way. So I want the feds to swallow up everybody. <laughs> and then but I want just to be why uh -huh. <laughs> they, they always get away with it because that's why right. they got the yeah. think about this. Diddy been having these parties for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know some of these judges, directors of the, the whatever the, the this alphabet and that alphabet and these high power people just like with that old other man that that uh, took his Steve. own self out yep so you know that this stuff has been this stuff is so deeply Im embedded they yep. need a fall guy yep. is diddy the fall guy hopefully because he's most weird hopefully he's the fall guy hopefully this is what wraps it all up in a nice little bow but i doubt it because it just looks shady to me that the feds have never let a person leave without and knowing that they wanted to search unless they wanted to search without him being there maybe that was it they say he leaving let's right. run up now i didn't think leave. about that angle i didn't think about that angle Cause yeah because he got that trunk in his closet because this does not <laughs> smell but he could also be taking his evidence with him how about that mm -hmm. so we conspiracy in theory and over here tonight uh-uh, you got to do it right. C-O-N. Spiracy. Because <laughs> I just don't, it just, it just don't, it don't pass the mail test for me. See, but what I understand, though, don't the feds always try to surprise you so that they can yeah. get their evidence? They do, but see, they want you to be there because they want to see how you act when they roll up in your crib. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be there. And more often than not, when they roll up in your crib, they roll up in there and they take you out in them silver bracelets. So I'm I'm just, I'm thinking maybe since it's the H trafficking that maybe this is something different, how they doing it or whatever, but they let him leave. You let, <laughs> they, you can't tell me they didn't let him leave. They let him leave. I promise you they let him leave. I don't know if that was their strategy or what, but they let him leave. But well, they sure didn't let Nesto ass go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but what did he she say? Off when he find out that uh, Trump Brown got low. <laughs> right, right. So oh, wait, I, I guess, didn't they I say that they back. saw the complaint said that they saw him and they bust a Yui. They didn't. They didn't. They just happened up on Nesto, right? Because don't, mm -hmm. don't I remember it saying something like that? Like they saw him and knew who he was, and they. Bust the Yui and got him. When that stuff said he was minding his own business and they just pulled him over right over there. Because yeah, there was no warrant attached to that license plate. Come on. You know, if he had a warrant, it was attached to that plate. And any cop action who would have ran it would have pulled him over. But he, you know, he just tried to act like a babe in the woods. Well, was the plate fake anyway, though? 
<laughs> well, I don't know about the truck. He was in that truck. truck. He was in his truck, which is in right. Charlotte Day. So, no, it wasn't fake. Well, right. well, did Charlie have to go to the kiosk and get some damn tags for the truck so she can bring it back? But you they probably had had for a minute. He's been in jail. Uh-oh. They probably fired. Yeah, he's been yeah, in jail. Yeah, he been in jail like room. a while. Yeah. Was it six months or a year? It had been a while. Cause yeah, it had been a while. Because she was, did she get it like and picked it up like in February or something like that of last year? Or March, yeah, something like that. She should have left that dust the there. hell it was it. Yeah, he had been there for a minute. Yeah, because I think he had been in there like six months because they was getting ready to sell it. Because yeah. that's usually what it takes time, turnaround time for them to get everything in order to sell your, your stuff. That's probably the only thing he had paid off was that truck. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that raggedy truck, duly. With you know, all the oil on it. Mm-hmm. And he wanted that truck. So when he expected Shirley to drive around in that truck. He was just trying to keep that truck. So when he get pop out, because you know in his mind, he thought he was getting out every other day. Yeah, that's true. He'll have a way to get around. Now back to Dak, because I was kind of just listening because I was trying to do a, a bunch of things, including uh get some groceries. Uh, took my nephew to teach him how to grocery shop. So he stopped acting <laughs> like he didn't got no food, you know. <laughs> Seriously, you know, you gotta what step in the, the gap. But but um, with Dak, you know, I put a comment before I came up that literally, I'm like, I'm serious. These guys are going to have to start getting consent forms with video or that marry a the darn women. Uh, Andy, you're going to sign that, and you're going to do a video I one, too. Ain't even sign. good enough. You got to literally say, and the A don't work because that's what Diddy got. Every encounter, you have to literally turn the camera on and say, you are consenting, right? Yes. Yeah. And then do the whole act, you're consenting. But you know what a lot of guys did? And I just noticed it with my local team. You know, I'm here, and, and I, the Bengals is my team. But a lot of you notice certain guys move. As soon as they get, they sign those contracts, they marry that high school or college or that church sweetheart, and mm-hmm. they stay out of the club. The ones who still out there trying to hit everything moving, that's how you get him done. LeBron James. He they married got, his high they school. They got money and they're young. You know, it's they only depending but if they stay for years. I, I Some of them are just 19, 20, 21, 22. But, I don't, but yeah. But no, but what I'm saying is if you got to look at some of the, the some, I'm, not, I'm going to go ahead and make a distinction between the clear and not so clear. The not so the, the the clear ones, they don't care how old they are. They 21, 22. They go, they they marry that woman and they put about 10 babies on her, <laughs> but they stay out of the streets. Our problem when we have problems with our, our the players here, and you're right, they're younger guys. And I was so happy when um what is his name? I can't even think of the boy's name. He's one of our best receivers, one of the best receivers. Oh, uh, what's your team again? The Bengals. It's it's Jamar. What is his name? Dan? He's a receiver. I can't think of his yeah, name. I don't know why. I know who you're talking about, too. I was just talking about Jamar the other day. Oh, uh, God. Oh, God. I don't know why I can't think of his name. But anyway, he sat his butt down. Jamar Chase. He got Chase. his mom and daddy in his life. You don't hear about him out here in these streets. But that's and, why he sat down, though. You got to think about it, Bank. He had his mom and daddy in his yeah, life. If you exactly. think about it, the majority of these young guys and they these don't. don't have it. <laughs> Either a mother or a father. They a lot mm-hmm. of them don't have a lot of them don't have dual parent households. And that that sometimes mm-hmm. is the problem because they not looking to be a dual parent household. Because a lot of people in dual parent households, right? That's what they look for. We want that. This is what I want. I want me a girl like yeah, my mama. That's she true. She, that's she, true. You know, but yeah. most of the young guys like I want a girl like my mama. She hitting the club, we hanging, we twerking, we popping mm-hmm. things, we, you know, we hanging out together. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. mm-hmm. it's this and then sometimes it's a dual parent family household where they don't want that either. It's 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 really personality and true. that person can't character their character character <laughs> <laughs> See, i have a, a friend um her both of her sons play college ball and actually her youngest he'll probably oh, get did. drafted and there he's biracial she's white his dad's black but they met and he his dad was playing football and played college ball so his dad they said that's a talk they had with them since they were little itty bitties about these girls you know and how to move out here and they some handsome men i mean handsome and I'm like, yeah, you got to move the right way because if somebody don't teach them, 
but I got something to say to you, Bank, and I'm trying to put this as respectful as I can, not to you, but just about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I live in the suburbs. My mm -hmm. son likes to clear people. Yeah. Them, period. Yeah. That, that's yeah. who we roll with. Yeah. Now, I had to have extensive conversations with him about do's and don'ts because I've seen, I, I came out here in my late teens me, after me. and I saw where the it was a young black college, I mean, a football player in high school. He was dating a little a clear young lady and she nice girl, mm -hmm. mother, nice lady. Mm -hmm. Father did not know that she was dating this young man. They mm -hmm. did what they did as teenagers exploring. He tried to bring him up on charges. Now yeah. I'm not talking okay. back in the 1980s, nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the the right. the teens to the 2000s, and I was distraught because he was maybe about five, six years behind my son. Uh, uh, be, uh, uh, he was five or six years ahead of my son, and I was distraught because I'm like, but that's his girlfriend. She consented, and do you know he walked into the police station? He he brought down some. They invested, and this is what really got me, is they actually did an investigation on the boyfriend, and he almost had to register. But luckily, yeah. the mom, however she did it, undercut the dad. And I was mm -hmm. so thankful for that lady. It wasn't even my son, just a friend of the mm -hmm. family. But I was like, thankful that she did that, because had she not did that, that boy would be on the registry right now. He wouldn't have got a chance to go play football and he's a known football player in the college realm in michigan mm -hmm. and they that wouldn't even happen because that man did not want his daughter with that dark-skinned boy and, and you that, know what that saying? is a thing and that's where when these i feel like a lot of these women i'm not gonna say just clear but it happens quite often with the clear women where they get with these athletes i'm not gonna say no race because i say athlete as in these men with yeah. money and when you don't do what they want to do because clear is always the complexion that whatever you say is what it is i've seen that happen now i'm not judging nothing but in my opinion i think that brought this because he said man i ain't do nothing we was just in college doing what we do in college mm -hmm. he but said, he said, clear my name that's i agree with you 100 percent because my nephew he finally he finally dating somebody who got some melanin and so I, I wouldn't believe me we talked but the example i was given the reason why i gave that example because his daddy was in that position he, his relationship with his mother it it, it could have went that way and it didn't but let me tell you her parents for years tried to get her away from him like he was a bad demon seed it was until she got pregnant with her first son and she told him she was cutting them off if y'all if you can't accept my kids then you can't i won't be around you that's when they changed their tune so he can not only can his dad talk about it just from a man point but i've been their son and guess what? His son, just because, you know, I always say, well, they, they mama's blonde hair, blue eyes. Of course, that's what he's going to like. And that's, mm -hmm. what it, that's what he dates up with. But so far, he hasn't had it. As far as I know, he hasn't had any problems. Very popular, very well, nice young man, all that good stuff. But it's a, it's a shame that, and, and I look at it from another angle, too, because sometimes they are. They are doing the, the deed. They are, they are taking advantage of these young ladies. They are, you know, as saying them. And 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 they for so many years or so for so long, you know, it was it was just accepted. right saying that you were just like you were drinking or you was where you was. I mean, that's still like you said until recently. I mean, heck, you still go through that now, even with these cases now. You you saw all the chatter around the Cassie case. You know, people just couldn't wrap their heads around how did it get this far this long. I said, you know, you can consent to you no longer consent. So you gonna tell me that maybe for the first five years she was cool with it. But maybe one day she woke up and said, I don't want to do this no more. And see, I'm an outlier on the Cassie mm -hmm. situation. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to really express to the fullest like I would. But I'm an outlier on the Cassie situation because she left and came back. So mm -hmm. if I'm coming back, I'm coming back with a wire on so we can get oh, this yeah. on tape. And I can get away and be gone away and get some protection and be gone. But see, that's a whole another story for another day. That's a, comp that's a whole complicated I'm, mess. Exactly. So, and what that did was that opened it up for all this. So I'm okay with that. 
but I still I'm uh, I'm an outlier in the Cassie situation because I believe two things can be true. I can believe he did all that stuff to her, and I can believe she allowed a lot of it. I don't know. But I thought, he made, I thought he made her come back though. But she, she, he, he threatened and scared her to come back, and that's why yeah. I said I would have came back with a wire on. Yeah, I would have came back her, Well, just with that story I was just talking about, remember when Tiffany was looking for her mom and she went to her hometown on Love and Marriage Huntsville? And I know this is a whole other subject. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to throw the subject off, but remember when Tiffany was looking for her her uh, 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 natural parents? Because remember, she was a foster she was a foster child. And she went to go find her parents and people was telling her about her mom and her dad. And her mom was, you know, clear. And her dad was uh, was with Melon, and they didn't want them to be together. You know, her, her mom, um, her mom's parents uh, didn't want her to be with that baby. Be, and they get, made her give her baby away. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an uncle, but but this was like in the eight, in the late seventies, early eighties. He had dated this clear lady uh, for over twenty years, and. Um, he really, he was kind of, kind of pimping her out also. And I guess um, when she got tired of him or what have you, she finally went back home to her parents and her parents made him file charges on, on him. Do you not know that he got 20 years? Uh, believe because we, yeah, we're in a country town, right? And so this town here, they still look at you crazy when you go at a certain part of the town. And and we in today, well, you know, when you win 2024, and they still feel that way. Some of them do. They haven't accepted it yet. But they made my uncle uh, go to jail for 20 years uh, because she claimed that he raped her. Well, you and know, he, uh, here it's a lot more subtle, but you mm -hmm. know it's there. That's why I had the conversation with my son. Like, look, like who you like, you just have to move strategically and be careful because there's certain situations that when you with your friends. And y'all mm -hmm. get in the situation, it's all on you, buddy. So be careful. You know, we, we quote unquote come a long way. You got people now, they'll say I'm biracial and all that other good mm -hmm. stuff. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, when 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 the when the when the what the grease hit the, the pan when, the when, smoke the hit, clear. When, when the smoke clear. <laughs> they, <that's laughs> right, yeah. Or, my point is they don't see you, you know, you could come to our community and cry that or, or claim that all day. But mm -hmm. you know, you go into that house and you got a little bit of a tan, you immediately are are, mm -hmm. are public enemy number one. So that's what these young kids don't understand. They think we're in a new age and new times. Yeah, certain things and beliefs have changed, but when the ish hit the fan, they still gonna serve you up. That's why you got these Latino, mm -hmm. you know, Mexicans, they come and they let me just tell you when I was in high school, there was this girl, her name uh, was Tinty, she was Indian, <laughs> she was my complexion. But you couldn't tell her that. But as soon as she wanted to date one of those boys that she thought she was, those parents snatched them right back. Right. That's what they don't understand. It. That's what we try to tell them. And like, you know, at the end of the day, you may go ahead and say, yeah, my, yeah, my mama white, my daddy black, so I'm biracial. But those people don't see it that way. Well, you may want to uh, remind Sonya of that because she loved to display her 13% of black uh, whiteness. And so somebody <laughs> might need to let her know you know, uh, just like if they didn't accept our president, and he have, he more than thirteen percent, he fifty percent. Yeah. And so if they don't, they don't accept fifty percent. They damn sure ain't gonna accept thirteen percent. And mm -hmm. um, I think she thinks she's on their level or what have you. But you're absolutely right. If you got an ounce of 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 us in you, then you're disowned. You're not considered. You know, their color. You're considered um, our race. You're considered melanated. <laughs> No matter how much of, of our, our blood you have, yeah, it's hard rating a young man, and you and and, and and hats off all to the to the mothers, especially now that we are so much more integrated. Like I said, you know, one of my nephews is married to a a, a clear person, and right now he's having an issue. He don't know what to do because his daughter running around with her hair in poof balls. But my her <laughs> sister can lay some hair out. His sister, and it is really easily managed. You know, we'll look at it like, all we need is a brush and a little bit of water, spray bottle. But <laughs> she's feeling some type of way because she can't do it. So the little girl, but her, my nephew know that there's going to be a problem. Now, his wife don't understand that. I said, well, wait till the day when she come home in tears because somebody done called her a nappy-headed something. I said, you know, 
it, 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 those are things that some people still to this day don't think about the consequences. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You just got to raise them with awareness. And some people right. still want to stick their heads in the sand about that stuff. And it just it's like, okay, I don't care who you marry as long as they love you and they take good care of you and right. you equally all that stuff. But you can't ignore society. You can't ignore what's happening. You got to prepare your kids for that. But even so DL Hughley said he didn't, he was never called that the N word until he was around 13 or 14 years old because he was in California. Mm -hmm. He said uh, a cop called him that. And he said, you know, he's never had, he, he didn't even really understand what it was. You want to hear something? That, that. that happens with your parents because you do need to educate your kids so they can know when somebody is being that way with them uh, uh put it like that because that's one thing with my daughter because my daughter went to predominantly uh clear mm -hmm. schools and i made sure she know like when somebody offend you this is these are the target words right here you know all right well so, we were living in the suburbs also and i and i guess my son was attracted to to the uh, you know the other people and so i was like um, no, you need to get somebody that look like your mom because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of problems in society. Even though we think that it's okay and they say that it's okay, it's not okay with all of them. And you don't want to be caught up in no mess because you're trying to date somebody's daughter and they don't like the fact that you're dating them and they can get you in a whole whirlwind of trouble. So in, in order to avoid that, just go get somebody that look like your mom and your grandma, and you'll be good. Yeah, but you know that they, they what they exposed to, and they're aggressive. I mean, when you know, like yeah. when my nephew started going through like middle school, those girls are aggressive. And like my older, the one I told you is Mary. I we had a conversation years ago. It was kind of a tongue in cheek, and I had to kind of get hurt his feelings a little bit. I said, now the reason why you over there playing in the snow is because you ain't got the balls to step up to one of us. That's your problem. <laughs> you, oh, you, your to, name to be, is your name. <laughs> but though, he, was trying, he was trying to say, oh, no, he, was trying to, he was trying to say, oh, they're all materialistic and they just want this, they want that. I said, no, you just don't, you don't feel like you measure up. You know that you, you feel like you don't measure up. Well, you can go, you know, and, and, and get from Hilda and she don't care. But mm -hmm. see, Bank, and, and my son's um, defense, there weren't any like i lived in one and they say people that thing that <laughs> that thing Sonya said about crossing eight miles because of this that, and the third that's what they say about the city i live in people mm -hmm. of a little tone don't like riding through my city so mm -hmm. think of my son is almost 30 so then he was like the darkest thing in the school and right again i told y'all the other day i'm not that dark so mm -hmm. we it was like wow because there was not a lot of biracial mm -hmm. stuff going on out here at that point because we talking 90s so mm -hmm. it was going on but it was kept over there you didn't in there and literally when my son graduated high school in a class of over 2000 kids there may mm -hmm. have been four yeah boys and yeah, girls let me, let me, let me tell y'all something let me tell y'all guys something. Mm -hmm. We we really came as far as America go. America did make some strides on that, okay? And everybody wasn't on board with it. And you know, on both sides of the fence. Okay. Because in my grandmother's house, I couldn't bring nobody. You know, my cousin tried to bring somebody home like that, and my sister did. <laughs> and both of them got cussed the hell out. Okay. <laughs> So it's on both sides. It's not yeah. just one sided. Oh, definitely, yeah. And the whole thing about it is when Barack Obama became the president, they couldn't fathom that you had this, you know, uh, melatonin person running the country. And then when the next food come in office, yeah. um, he gave them permission to go mm -hmm. back. Right. He gave them permission to go back and for them to bring all those feelings back up again, whoever wasn't on board with it. So now you can just do it all out in the open. And that's why come we're at where we, where we are today. It ain't never been eliminated, but right. they kept it inside their houses. But also too- It wasn't out in public like that. It, I mean, it was a little bit, but not like it is now. Now they feel like they, they have power to, you know, they feel like they are emboldened to let you know how they feel now. 
And it's okay, but you got to deal with the consequences. That My whole thing is do what you like, but you just got to deal with the consequences. We don't live in, in Shangri-La. We don't live in, you know, this utopia and everything. So you have to take the bumps and the bruises. If that love is that strong and this is who you want, then you got to deal with that reality. And back to what you were saying, Shane, now my nephew is almost 40. So, but he grew up in the hood. When I say the hood, we, call, we used to call it Brick City. It was one of the toughest projects in our city. And then when my sister moved up out of there to the suburb, that opened him up. So he had exposure. It's just that it was a lot easier because he had a really, he had a crush on this girl, but he was saying, nah, she just like this. She wouldn't, and it was, a, it was a young black girl. So he immediately, it became her fault that he couldn't summon the words or the courage to, you know, to try to, you know, get to know her better. It was easier just to, you know, hang out with these, you know, these other girls. But, but he see, my son liked yeah. what he was around, though. No, it's no, not. No, no, the projection part. I, that's what I was dealing with. I could care less, honestly. But, but it was see, the that's projection. because that's kind of different, too, though, because he yeah. did come from the hood. See, I came from mm -hmm. the hood to the suburbs, yeah. so I understand what he was dealing with. But I never went that way because I'm comfortable with like people. I have dated outside the, my race twice, actually, and it was very mm -hmm. comical both times because <laughs> one was like a hood boy and the other one was like very preppy. And it was it was not what I would have liked to stay with for the rest of my life. So I, again, it's more of characteristics, but my son is often called in a room full of colored folk as my grandma called them. <laughs> and y'all know she from the she used to pick cotton so right. she, he is called the nerd even though he's not a book person like that but mm -hmm. he's the nerd because he talks very proper, proper and yeah. he likes things that are not in the norm of a boy a, a black boy raised in the urban areas so he likes anime and all this other different mm -hmm. stuff he wore vans back in the day when everybody else was trying to wear Jordans and all that. So right. it's just like, he liked the girls that like what he liked and those girls that like what he liked. How many young black girls that's 30 like anime? Where they at? Cause I've only mm -hmm. seen two and it was funny because she married one of my younger cousins. And it was funny because I was like, dang, I had never met a girl under at their age that liked anime she was the first mm -hmm. black girl i ever met that and not like it but was into it like my mm -hmm. son like your son so it was yeah so i get what it is and i feel like that is stuck in that because there's also a difference when you have a black father and a and a clear mother because oh, that's like you said bank you like what's like your mama almost yeah. so he was liking I feel like he was liking who his most nurtured was. But the thing about it is my son and we, I'm from very hood Detroit area. And we used to go back there, but not on a, a regular basis. But he was around that. It's just, he was more comfortable because they talked about him because he wasn't like the urban boys. So yeah, right. so, yeah. Oh, I get that a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now I was, uh, I graduated school. I ain't no, I ain't ashamed. I graduated in 1989. Some, I guess, completely. <laughs> were you even born? Completely. <laughs> but well, no, I was a very, a very progressive high school. It was very, it was probably about almost 50 50. It was a college prep school. You had to test to get into it. So very early on, I saw, you know, there was a lot of interracial, a lot of uh, black girls who were dating white guys and vice versa. So I yeah, just started that. though, right? I'm sorry. It had just started, though, right? No, no, no my school's been around and, and integrated. No, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the dating, the op, you know, dating of the interracial dating because that's when it started for us in the oh, 80s. Like the I, 80s. I graduated in '84. Well, that's, that's, just, that's, that's, that's the way I was exposed. No, I'm just let me finish. That's the way I was exposed. I mean, it was like seamless to me because so, I went to school from seventh grade through twelfth grade. It was but where were you though, Bank? Where were you? Were you in yeah. the urban? Were you urban? I lived in the city. Oh. I lived in, lived in, the, in the major. In the, rather, I lived in the city. I didn't live in the suburbs. I grew up. Everybody on my block was black. But what the only thing I was gonna say was what what in Detroit. We had one. We had one clear person in our whole school in high school. That's what right. I'm saying, though. No, that's what I'm saying. That's my we, point. We weren't that, integrated we like that in Detroit, right? But that's. But let me finish. That's what I'm saying. So these concepts, they, they, I was always been open minded about 
all that. And I seen it play out, like you said about the, the nerdy girl, the nerdy, but God, that's how I went to school with. We were all considered nerds. So being into Dungeons and Dragons or listening to pop music and all that other stuff and being preppy, we used to call it being preppy. We got our styles from them, the guest jeans and all that but, stuff. But what state was it? It's Ohio. I was Ohio. in Ohio. Ohio. Okay. I'm in, I'm in the Midwest. So what I'm saying is, but my school was unique. Let me finish. My school was unique that all the other public schools, where the city public schools were predominantly black, unless you was on the West Side. There was one school on the West Side, and that was still kind of German dominated. You had to go to private school. So that was so that besides my school, the only other school was the performing arts. So that's what I'm saying about that. I seen that early on. I was just making the point that I, I seen that. So when you were talking about your son being into anime, I'm just thinking in my head, he would have been a perfect student at the school out because they still do that to this day. School's and highly see, you would have been good out here because you mm -hmm. would have fit in. We mm -hmm. I wasn't fit. I came out here in high school. Mm -hmm. I was so distraught. I used to steal my mama car and go back to the city. Okay? Yeah. That's because, my own thing. Yeah. Because I was I was like frazzled coming from mm -hmm. high school. I started high school in the city, then I came out here and it, it shook me because mm -hmm. I what what is this? And literally 20 <laughs> minutes away, and that's that's the difference that I'm trying to say between Dak and what we're seeing happen to him, is because like you said, Black Auntie, you lived in an urban place, but I don't know of a place outside of Chicago that's more urban than Detroit back even mm -hmm. in the 80s mm -hmm. and up north, mm -hmm. up, up northern right. You know what I'm saying? Because I know for sure, I think maybe Toledo was a little kind of that way. Cincinnati because, is, is almost here. Yeah, are, Cincinnati, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. but but certain parts though only certain parts of this no no our, the majority we're we're probably the city itself and it has been let me just tell you most of our neighborhoods we like i said we only have a few neighborhoods that are i mean it's i don't know how to describe it but we weren't I, I took one thing you said and what you said was when you went to this side or that side then it got mixed like you said the school that one, it got mixed only no one school side. In the 80s, in 89, in Detroit public schools, you are not having 40, 60, you are not having 30, 70. In a graduating class, you will have one clear person throughout the entire city of Detroit public schools. That's all I'm trying to say is because we moved yeah, from east to west. That's what I'm telling you. That school I went to was the only fully integrated school. We, all we other, had none, though. We had none. I know that because this it's in the state. I, if you look up my school, I went to Wanna Hills. Okay, it's, it's it's one of the top schools in the nation. It's a it was a it was almost it's it's a very rare school. That was just a little pocket. You had a test to get in there, so it wasn't like anybody had a choice. So outside of my high school, all the other high schools in the city of Cincinnati were predominantly black. All the white people had started scouring to the suburbs or putting their kids in Catholic school. So by the time I graduated high school, all the predominantly top high schools in my city were predominantly black. And so you, it may not have been one, they may have had maybe 10, but they did not have a lot. Um, Cincinnati was very urban and now they're trying there to move. There some yeah. schools in Detroit that didn't have one. I was being generous with one. <laughs> like, hello. That's why I'm saying like Detroit is kind of an outlier oh, where yeah. Detroit literally in the 80s it was kind of weird because it was really nice where we lived at but yeah. mm -hmm. when we, it was almost like you just said when we moved in they moved out but yeah. it was like one side and that was where i went to school initially with the, my first ninth grade year we had the largest population of clear people with two people in <laughs> in the school and one of them was a girl and she graduated and left and then the boy was around our age but well, let me take y'all all the way back. Let me take y'all all the way back to the 70s. In 76, <laughs> 1976, I'll never forget it. Down here in the South, in the South, baby. Lord have mercy. The federal government had to sue. Oh, yeah. They had to sue my city to make us integrated because in the 70s is when they made is when they when they uh, passed the law and said everybody have to integrate and catch buses and you know interact with each other. Well, mm -hmm. my city, my city say, hell no, we ain't doing all of that. <laughs> and so we were we were like almost a decade behind 
And what did they do? Wow. They made they made us who who like y'all said we went to predominantly uh, melanated schools. It was just like Chan said, we may have one or two. And that's being generous. Mm -hmm. And we had a few of them, it, them, a few of them on the border people. We had a few of them over here with us, but the rest of us was all melanated. And you so they you know. made us, um, they bust us. We had to get up early. Like every, everybody hate Chris is my story. Okay. Mm. Remember when Chris had to get up and get busted? Uh, and he didn't have to, but he did it. Per he did it because his parents want him to go to a better school. But mm -hmm. every day, uh, every everybody hate Chris is my story because we, all of us had to get bust. And right. we were so pissed off because we were all, you know, ready to go to junior high school. Mm -hmm. We were ready to go to the school that everybody else went to. And down they the street. Yeah, yeah. They down, down the street. Down, made us mm -hmm. get up at 6 damn o'clock to be on that damn bus stop at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And we had to get bused out there. And like you said, uh, I don't know which one of y'all said this, but it was a cultural shock to Me, us. I'm the one. <laughs> it was a cultural shock to us, and it was a cultural shock to them. And we were like, uh, we fought all the way. Uh, y'all the... were so behind because I'm what you just said is my mother's story. Like that that's that's why well, you got to remember um I said what I said is retired. <laughs> but you know what? We are around the same age too. I'm retired. But yeah, but I'm, I'm but but I can go you to the senior citizen. I can go live in the senior citizen community if I want to, but I just, just you know, I just that I happened to be up thing. here in the sixties though. My mother yeah. went my mother went to mm -hmm. one of Detroit's first like integrated schools because she was kind of smart. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she had to get bus like the yeah. school from her house was literally fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. And that so was in sixty one. And that was in sixty what? That was about sixty one, sixty two. It yeah, was before so, 65, but it was so 17 60. years later, 15 to 17 years later, when the federal government sued us, is when we Dang. got integrated. Yep. Wow. See, my older sister, I, I'll never forget because she went to the neighborhood high school, but they used to make everybody in my neighborhood go to the high school that was two uh, neighborhoods away. So literally, the, the black kids were going downhill and the white kids was coming uphill and they were separated. And it was like they, and then well, my sister, they they were integrated by the time she got to high school. But the little, if it you mark it ten years before her, it was just like what you just said, Shan, like with your mother. It was they but were bank, just. You really think too. Mm -hmm. Ohio is a little bit more southern than we are too. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Oh. Well, Cincinnati, we right. You know, we're a rock throw from Kentucky. Yeah, so that's the thing about Ohio that I laugh about all the time is when I go to Ohio, I be like, "Oh, y'all so country." We say that in like a <laughs> We just say y'all look. <laughs> well, baby, we my grandparents is from Alabama, Georgia, Florida. Like I, my roots. I understand what you're saying. I said what you said because my mom and my uncle was the first two. My grandma had seven kids, and my mom, which was the baby, and then my uncle is the next to the baby. Well, we my, uncle that just, my uncle I just dropped out. Too. My uncle dropped out because he was like, they was getting beat every day, yeah. you know, because they well, were... That's what I was just going to say. We went it over was, there acting it like... dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went over there acting like Nesto. We, 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 like we went over there acting like Nesto and Dion. Then we went over there kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> they were, they were <laughs> 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 because we didn't want to be there. So... Right. You know, uh, and 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 so a lot of them got beat up. A lot of them got their lunch money taken. <laughs> a lot of them got their notebooks and shit taken. Whatever they want to take, they took it from them mm -hmm. because we didn't. We was retaliating. We didn't want to go over there because, like, like a uh, T said, T Bug said, we was the first ones to get to, to have to do that. So we yeah. were pissed like a mother. I could even imagine, and you know that's why I always I say. I got a question. I got a question. I said what I said. So, what made them come in and the government force it? There had to be a situation because usually it's a situation. So, what happened to make them come in and make because make Texas them wasn't it? Texas wasn't abiding by the federal government guidelines. I mean, but how did was there like a situation? Because you know, like a whistleblower type thing where somebody yeah. something happened, somebody told like. Is there something like that? Because you know, usually 
is they gonna continue to let people do what they do until they get busted out so how did they get busted out do you know how they got busted I, out that they I, I, don't, I don't really know shan because i was in the seventh grade and so oh, you know okay. i'm just a kid oh, you know I, I was looking at boys at that time so i have no clue <laughs> <laughs> you know they had Ruby, they had Ruby Bridges. I think that was in 1966 or 19, where she had to be escorted. Ruby Bridges was in the 50s, wasn't she? Hmm, good question. I thought, I, I thought Ruby was in the 50s, and that's why I come in the 60s. They made them integrated. No, I'll Google it. I thought it was. Yeah, I'm going Google. Look, I'm like, she oh. can't get me looking like what? What happened? <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, they did that to us. And so we didn't, you know, we didn't take heed to that at all. You know, we, we cause we were like, well, why they can't come to our school? Why right. We got to get up and get books. You know why we got to get inconvenienced. And so we were all pissed off and mad about it. And I'm telling you, we went over there with a vengeance. We did not go over there to try to be their friend. And if I tell you every day it was somebody dark uh, in that office, Every day they had an office full of people because we was retaliating just that hard and them teachers were scared of us, them kids were scared of us. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They I mean, even if we um, you know, like they say, you know, that that the black woman is angry all the time, they just didn't understand us. And so you couldn't even raise your voice, you couldn't have an opinion, you couldn't, it was just certain stuff that our teachers would let us get away with. They was they was afraid of us and they you know they retaliated against us. We couldn't even, you know, walk out of you know, get be late for lunch or whatever. Anything we did, we had to go to the office. Well, I'm looking, that's why I was wondering what, what it was because Ruby was 1960, November 1960. I knew it was in the 60s. 60s. Yeah. Well, yeah, I kind of looked it up and I guess it's because they're talking about 1970. They said it was mainly like East Texas, so I'm not sure where you were from. Um, I said what I said, but they said basically the DOJ came in it was like they were i guess it started going down a list and seeing who was complying and who wasn't the federal they, government that's why i said the federal government sued our city and yeah. made us integrate because D dallas had already integrated and i guess houston did too but it was mm -hmm. all like the little smaller cities like san antonio and austin and you know the, the, and we're considered what we call a medium city we're not you know we're not metropolitan but we're not no we're not a rural country town either so we're mm -hmm. kind of like in between, and so they had to come in and, and sue them to make them to make them uh, they, integrate they school. Yeah, so it all stemmed from you know the the Brown uh, uh, v Board of Education, just that they weren't following through with the mandate. There you go, that part, that so, part right there, and that was in seventy six. Yeah, they, so they, I didn't know that they came through like that, Black Auntie. That, that's why I was asking, because I'm like, yeah. I know, because up here we were already so far past it that mm -hmm. it was never, how did it come about? So, but you know, y'all was, 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 was in compliance. But was y'all yeah. in compliance, so Shane? Yeah. That's when my mother got busted in, in 60, 62. Yeah. I believe it was 62. Yeah, they were compliant up here in Ohio, too. It's just that yeah, that's when you know, clear people started putting their kids in Catholic school or moving out to the to the sticks. What well, then, Lady T-Bug, what year was it when your mom had to get bust? Was she in the 70s, too, when she had to get bust? Yeah, because I think she was born in 60. Oh, my uncle is. He's just, his birthday, he a Leo like me, so I used to keep up with his birthday. <laughs> Girl, you know they weren't even going to the hospital down here, baby. You know, you we had, they had to go over to the fam. You, it was you know interracial marriages, all that was illegal still down here in the south. So, um, let me uh, let me let me let me look. Don't get to the line. Right? <laughs> Girl, and my mom passed like. What, 25 years ago, so I really don't be trying to keep up with it because it makes me sad. But, um, right, right. I'm in that same boat, mine's did too. Mine's passed in 2001, so 24 years, 23 years ago. 94, he died 94. It don't seem like that long, too. My guest buried to me sometimes. Who 90? Oh, your, your dad, yeah, my dad, yeah, he oh, died in February 12th, 1994. It was the opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympics. I'll never forget. You're my, my old janky daddy. My janky daddy still walking around being janky. <laughs> and his ass 80 years old. <laughs> 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 
that's special too. With all the stress and hypertension and all that other stuff. Wait a minute. Like, Ain't nothing wrong with him. No, this no, ninja no. don't take this ninja don't take nothing. And I'm telling you, he is not the best person on this side of the earth at no. all. And I don't understand why he's still here because he has done a lot. Mm. They keep them around. <laughs> yeah, he, he he he's an ex pimp. Oh, he talking about mine too. My mom will be sixty six. <laughs> Her birthday's uh actually January second. She was born at twelve oh one. Mm. So she was born in six, she was born nineteen sixty or sixty six. She will be sixty six. Um, she will be sixty six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So you she was born at twelve oh one on January second, and my grandmother has been pissed to the day she died about that. Okay, she wanted her daughter to be born on New Year's. <laughs> wow. So she she um she wasn't born in she had to be born in fifty nine or sixty then. Sixty six. Uh, would that have been 57? That would have been the 50s. Yeah, 58, 57, something like that. Because my mother is 27, so she was 26 when she had me, so let's do the math. I'm going to get you. Uh, so what, so did your oh, mom baby. say what, what grade she got busted in, Lady Seawood? 58. She was born no. in 58. That's right. That's right, 58. That's right. And my uncle is like two years older than her. They like, they does Youngest, so what year did she get born? Oh, I don't know. I never, t I never even talked to her. But they would talk about it like my uncle, you know, sometimes we'd be at my grandma's house, but I never paid attention, I never cared to know um, more about it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, my mother dropped out of school when she, when she got pregnant at 16. So, she, you know, back then, you, you, you talk about the 62. My sister was born in 62, so yeah, you she had to drop out. They didn't have. Well, they, was in high school. Pregnant. they were in high school because they went. They said they was going to high school, so that had to be in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your mother. Yeah, your mother was uh, a young and uh, compared to my mom. Oh, well, so, my so your mother, your mother was like us then. So yeah. they didn't. So that the federal government probably sued Texas and Florida at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Probably more than likely. I'm pretty sure it wasn't just Texas and Florida. I'm pretty sure it was all of the South. Because let's get something straight, everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to learn a little, it's time to do a little black history lesson. Yeah, let's get some let's get some real straight. All right. When they formed up when they formed the Union and we had the Civil War, you can rest mm -hmm. assured the South is still trying to operate that way. They did Ooh, not yeah. want to they did not really want to integrate with the North. And they've always ostracized the North. They've always been intimidated by the North because the North is about education and um, making sure that, let's put it like this, separate but equal is what went on in the North a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they didn't yeah. want y'all to be slaves, but you couldn't live next door to them either. Right, that part. That part. Okay. You, can work, you can work for them, but you know, you they slinking their way back to my mother street. I'm like, y'all ran when we first when we all moved here. Now y'all trying to buy up everything that's open now. Well, because the, the, the land that we have is where they left from, and everything was was um I know here in the south, uh everything was really uh based around downtown, right? And remember downtown kind of faded out once the suburbs came came around right everybody left mm -hmm. everybody left the neighborhood the city and all of that they all went out to the suburbs well now they're revamping a lot of downtown i know they're doing hitter in the south they are and mm -hmm. um yeah downtown is real popular now mm -hmm. yeah downtown is real popular now so now everybody want to come back over here you know in the in the areas that they gave us now they want to come back and be some givers some indian givers and, and take it back you know, that's how Detroit is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because downtown is becoming popular again because it wasn't that popular once everybody moved out to the suburbs. That's how all the malls and the street centers came around. Something, yep. Shan. I had never been to Detroit. The first time I went to Detroit was almost two years ago. Never been. I was like, how can oh, wow. I fly the tenant? But I like, actually been to Detroit. So when I went, of course, one, seeing the blight, it was heartbreaking because, you know, Girl. blocks that were just, you know, leveled. Oh. 
nothing, like one house on the corner, then nothing. Yep. Then the house. But when I went to y'all downtown, it it made me I was like, I was so envious. Cause our downtown used to be lively. Our downtown is dead. And I was like downtown oh. is popping so hard that they have to shut it down at like one, two o'clock in the morning. They have to the police have to actually yep. go in and shut it down. Well, in yeah. Dallas, they got what they call um, Deep Ellum. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's called Deep Ellum. And in my home city did the same thing. It's like a mini version of Deep Ellum. And that's where, like, you know how when you go to, have y'all ever been to the Mardi Gras in Louisiana? No. Mm -mm. Okay, we need Vicky up here for that. But uh, when you go to the Mardi Gras, you just walk up and down streets, right? And every, mm -hmm. every five or six feet, you got a bar or you have some type of live band playing music. And you know, if you'll notice uh, the way they show the Mardi Gras on TV, it's, it, it, it reminds you of New York or something because everybody is walking. And in the South, T-Bug can tell you that we don't walk in the South, we drive our cars. Mm -hmm. We don't drive buses, of, yeah. we don't have That's kind of Detroit downtown too, because there is a bar literally every three steps and we yeah. got two casinos yeah. down there too. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was in New York City. The lights, the glitz, the the yeah. people moving. <laughs> I mean, it's and that, compared to my city, like they what they did, they ran all of the commerce. We don't even have a department store downtown anymore. They ran right. everything out for business and in these high dollar restaurants, and they they didn't want the the brown people, the black and brown people down there, basically. Wow. So they ran out of there, and literally, there's no downtown life. I don't even go downtown for what? Unless I work, why? Why? They not down. And, and, and see, y'all this gonna point. trip y'all out. Wait, wait, this gonna trip y'all out. Guess who brought downtown back alive? Take a guess, y'all. Take a guess. Kwame. Where you, Kwame. Where you Kwame. at? Where you at? Kwame. 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 Okay. Kwame we need to pass this. Brought it all back. <laughs> and they and they locked him up because boy was getting too powerful around these brown folks because he was walking up in barbershops, him and his men, and they was coming up in there like, what up, though? And he mm -hmm. sitting down getting haircuts. He was on the news. Everybody loved Kwame Kilpatrick except for the powers who be because they knew he was getting too powerful in business and in people. So they did that not want hard. that happening again because if y'all look up our first, our other mayor, um coleman a young he was mayor for so long that it brought the city down because the people loved him so much even when he was on his d bed they didn't mm -hmm. vote him out they had to take they didn't vote him out. so they didn't want that grip being put back on the city because in my opinion and from what my grandma say coleman a young was a thug and he <laughs> ran Detroit. And when Kwame brought back the parks, the people was loving them because until Kwame killed Patrick in Detroit, where I live, we didn't go to parks because when I was little, there was no more swings. After I got in high school, no more swings on uh, parks. The grass was tall. You couldn't go in the park. That black, that black auntie talking about was coming. But when Kwame came, he brought houses. He brought the Super Bowl. He brought a lot of stuff that was skipping yeah. over Detroit. But now it's kind of coming back because he started it. But they it's saw his power and they like, it's nope. weird not to have a park. Mm. Girl, the park, the grass at the park was taller than your car. Do you hear me? <laughs> well, let me he ask you this. Were y'all were y'all were y'all riding on uh trains and, and trailways and stuff at that no, time? Too? Cars, a little cars. They weren't afraid that y'all were gonna drive out there today, part. No, because Detroit, we didn't, we didn't, and like I said, I came from Detroit. We didn't, like Sonia said, we didn't go past eight mile or telegraph because that was the suburbs, and you get you get stereotyped and pulled over just for right. driving wild black. So mm -hmm. we stayed in our neighborhoods, and that's why it is what it is because we never migrated out because people we was happy where we was at because. Even though the parks was no longer open, we played in the middle of the street and we walked miles and back and forth. But the thing is, when Kwame came, he did he did what was being done, which was corruption. It was it's technically corruption to make backdoor deals about different things. But he was getting a lot of stuff done inside the community that we didn't have because literally the one of my family members had a birthday party at a park and i'm like at a park 
And yeah. when we went to the park, I was like, oh my God, they got swings. Girl, he, I had seen a that. swing at a park since I was like, she in, in bought that from the, from the Tallahassee, okay? Because that's See, what we got going you, on stand here. Up. <laughs> Where did y'all have family reunion this year? Huh? Where y'all have family reunion? I'm baffled about this park thing. Where y'all? Where, where, <laughs> we you? always at the park and rec now here. Right. We, got, mm-hmm. we got an island called Belle Isle, and that's where you go and have, if you had a family reunion, that's where you go have it. But I always went to family reunions in like Huntsville, Mobile, Alabama, all up and through there. So that's where I went for our family reunions. Cause like I said, I just said y'all and some other country stuff a few minutes ago. Cause that's, I was raised around my grandparents who my grandmother picked cotton in Mobile, Alabama. So that's when we me. went to family reunions, that's where we went. And also when they had family reunions, like in the nineties, they had them in buildings. We didn't have them at parks. We didn't have like the barbecues at the actual park, unless you went to like a, a national park or a city uh, um, a bigger city municipality where they took care of that because it was bigger, but the local neighborhood park, they were all down for a really long time. Well, honey, our town was, wasn't that big and we could drive over there to their park. So, honey, they gave us a park. Huge. <laughs> we, we had a park. We had, we actually had two Girl, swimming pools. <laughs> yeah, we had two swimming pools. We had a skating rink. They gave us everything because they did not want us out there. So, they gave us our own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and wait a minute, one of my skate rings got too old. They built the Planet Mimi, Alabama in the house. Mimi, you know, I'm right up the road. <laughs> but uh, right yeah, they what, um, when our parts got old, they gave us new ones. Our projects even had parts. That's what I was gonna ask you, Shane. Y'all projects didn't have parts either. Girl, the projects had a swing, a swing set yeah. with no swing. And that little thing that go back and forth. And, see, that was, sit on, and they used to sit on that and sell drugs. You know, that was the thing that take away all the fun. <laughs> She's like, I know, sis. Was the, yeah, I'm done, Shane. I'm not going to ask you no more questions. <laughs> this is a culture shock. Shane, this is a culture shock for a southern. What I say, up in the south. Understand because down here they, you know, at least you, you sound like that. Well, it sounds kind of similar because they did. They stopped. They, they like they would semen in the pool, so there are no longer yep. pools. Yep. And the the parks, they were the grass was cut, but wasn't nothing else there. And then it like for the young people, we used to there was a park we would all go to Sunday. It reminded me of Will Smith song "Summertime." We used to go hang out, have a good time. They put a high rise. Or they refurbished the building and put these condos in, and they decided the music was too loud. So they actually created a city ordinance against loud noise because of that. And then they would have the police come every week, every Sunday, and, oh, and, wow. and the presence. They just basically ran yeah. us up out of there. And we had no learn how to swim. Well, I in the eighties, it started more in the nineties for us. So all through my childhood, we I had all those services. But like my niece's generation, the millennials. They mm-hmm. did all the fun skating. We used to go to this one skating rink. It was in the suburbs. And we would go, they would have uh, teen Girl, skate. Go to no suburbs. And they stopped. They stopped <laughs> that too. They decided the kids were getting out of control. It was too many of us showing up. And they don't have and they don't have nothing to do. Our young people here have nothing to do but to go around and get in trouble. They have nothing to do. That's, that's, that's why they enjoy it like it is. It is. We we had the amusement park on our side of town. They just closed it down uh, this year because the, the rides and stuff. Uh, the uh, owners got too old, and uh, I guess nobody else wanted to buy. But we got a, a, a like a mini fair that oh. was on our side of town that we could we just had, actually walk to. We had community centers, and yeah. they all began to shut down in the nineties. We had community centers. Skate world yeah. was my jam. Miss E said she used to go to the skate world. <laughs> Yeah, we had a, we did have a skating rink on you know, in each side of town. Skate world. <laughs> we know we had a skate world too. Today, yeah. my, look, I was like, I want to get on some skates so bad, but I lo- it ain't like riding a bike. It ain't like <laughs> girl. Y'all but I, miss. I, I used to love skating. Say, listen, here, we got we got a skating party uh for, with our class reunion. They was like everybody that take medicine because it's our 40th class reunion. So they like, oh, uh, y'all gonna have to use y'all best judgment and everybody that's taking blood thinners and shit. Don't get on those. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh my God. Like, I got on some skates a few years ago. My thighs was burning. My leg, my whole leg started itching. I was like, ooh. You <laughs> it took me, it took me a little, I texted and I'm like, well, I used to get up and go. <laughs> You know me, man. <laughs> I used to, I used to skate nothing but backwards. Right, exactly. The whole night. <laughs> the whole damn night. I might skate uh, forward one time. The rest of the night, I'm going backwards because I'm thinking I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing something. I would love to go get back into skating because that's a good exercise, number one. And I it love really is. It's a good exercise. <laughs> Well, like, if, y'all, if y'all north of fifty, I mean, if y'all south of, uh, north of fifty, I wouldn't get on. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I don't do it. I get the bumper like my little nephews. Don't be having a little bumper. Time. <laughs> that for it. But yeah, we're supposed to be talking. Well, we're supposed to be talking about doing Dax and uh and P Diddy and all that. Yeah, bring it on back around to Dax because he's from Louisiana. Uh-huh. So I believe that's why he, because he's from Louisiana and having a clear mother, that's why his persuasion, his his preference is that because that's what he primarily probably was around. So yeah, and Dak is not Nesto, so you know he don't look like right. he guilty. He ain't well, got a bunch of crap going on with him. We got this just this one chick. Right. And we don't, Dak has like, always been clean cut though. Right, right. He ain't never had always family. been clean cut. Yeah, and so, um, like Sonya said, picking up strays and shit, character. and uh, girls just and, and girls just making up stories to get dudes in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she told Nesto. though. You just running around here picking up strays. And, and I said what I said. You know his character. You've been you've been watching him right. on this. You've been watching him on the Dallas Cowboys for how long? Longer than she's been watching Nesto. You know his yeah. character. No, well, that's been on that longer than that, though. I, I think that, that's been a uh, <laughs> right. And so, his, it, that ain't even never had no DWI in Dallas when I was in Dallas. And so, um, I don't believe, I mean, he could be, you know, he might have had a weak moment or what have you, because, you know, we ain't nobody is perfect, but I'm gonna just need her to prove it. And, um, I'm gonna need some, I'm, you know. I'm I'm with the new I'm with the kids when it comes to evidence. I'm gonna need some video footage and shit. I'm gonna need something, <laughs> some DNA or something. You need something. If it did happen, or all of these are like if we could go back and we can actually get you know just know that the point is there always are opportunists out here and they make it bad for everybody. Right. And so, so if you could just make the accusation. That's all you need. And there, it is an instant payday nowadays. Well, so, it's the right. opposite of what Me Too is supposed to be, Bank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. But I, back in the day, I, I promise you guys, back in the day in the 70s and 80s, 90s, mm-hmm. uh, they just stopped it in the 90s. If you were a, a female and, and you're a boss, because keep in mind, you didn't have as many workers in these little small businesses. You had more small business jobs than you did large corporation jobs back in the day, right? right. And so if your boss was a creep, uh, and, and that was even at some of these fast food chains because women didn't have that many rights, they did what they wanted to to you. That's why Jerry was caught up. And uh, and a lot of these older dudes, they're still doing that because they've been able to do what they do. And yeah, never most- nobody said nothing about it. Right, most right. definitely. But I'm just saying for the younger, now what I'm saying is that we know we have an impression. I hate to be so hard on our young people, but we have a very impressionable group of young people. And I'm not saying it by no stretch of the imagination. But (laughs) (laughs) it's not out of the realm of possibility that somebody would, you know, could. And that's the thing is everybody, like, let Sonya tell it. It's like what I think. What she'll probably say: one in two women do false accusations. Is the percentage is so high, it's ridiculous. But you know there is those outliers out there. And all I'm saying is that when you were reading, because I like I said, I was in and out, so you can correct mm-hmm. me. Like, well, but it was like she was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna press criminal charges on it if you hand over 160." And it's like, oh. it, it appeared to me that y'all let the the people that's really really doing stuff kind of like get away with it, and the people yep. that that's more likely than not 
Mm -hmm. to be doing something you know y'all just kind of you know it's like you hammer on the ones that really could you know most of the time it's going to be vindicated mm -hmm. exactly because like That's look at charlamagne I, look at charlamagne mm. it, girl that part when they gonna get him for real for real i'm waiting on it the way things going it probably be soon Back <laughs> <on the time. laughs> people are filing you know people are obviously getting attorneys you know like i said we don't know what she told them actually proof she may have but there are attorneys out here willing to take on these cases and before attorneys won't want to touch it because i gotta go against no. big business i gotta go a bit against a big corporation or a powerful no, corporation actually, no, but if you look at it, I just want to say was well, just one thing that if you look at it, attorneys were taking that for the people that were willing to stand in it because they were getting to. paid. Because if you stand in it, you won't get a settlement. Because for years they've been settling out of court. You never hear about it, they just bring it up. But see what happened was now we got access to these court records. As soon as something that hit, court. if public, somebody in there public. searching your name, it come up. Public records. Back, yeah, back right. in the day, it was like, hey, you did, you did do X, Y, Z to me, and I'm gonna come out if you don't give me a couple of dollars and make me go away. Let me get some therapy, pay for my life for the rest of the, you know, and then I'm going on about my business and try to live with it. But now you have a lot of people too that are willing to lie on it to get some money because that settlement thing was out there now mm -hmm. if a person people have realized that if a person is likely to have done something they got to pay you money but in criminal court it takes a lot more a whole lot more to get it to criminal court because look at michael jackson and r kelly from back in the day Mm -hmm. Dope. I, in my opinion, Michael Jackson was a bunch of lies, but I feel like he was such a different weirdo that it was believable. At least for 51%, me, percent because that's all you need. It's court. weird for a grown person to want to be friend kids. But so, he was damaged as well, though. We I, don't I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. That's very weird. <laughs> Can we not have very a Michael Jackson weird. fight? <laughs> mm -mm. Very weird. But, but, what I, but what I wanted that, to say that was... That came out and said it wasn't true, too. But yeah, I believe it's yeah. very weird that he wanted to play with kids and stuff. But he was also very damaged, too. But I wouldn't have sent my kids over there, but hey. Hell yeah. no. You wanna, my kids ain't coming to Never Never Land. That's weird. <laughs> right. Well, that's, just like Nickel, that's just like the Nickelodeon and the other thing like why are adults like picking up kids like I'm not we're not talking right. about family members or family friends people that you know you know but no you're not picking up my kid taking my kid nowhere but we right. talked about this I want to talk about Michael Jackson though that little boy on home alone what's his name Macaulay, Macaulay Cough. he didn't he said that wasn't true didn't he that's yeah. what she, she was saying that he said it wasn't true. And, and oh, the boy okay. who daddy he paid came back and said it wasn't true. The boy who daddy he paid said it wasn't true because then they tried to do the criminal thing and the daddy see, testified I think, and it was all about, I, I think it was all about the masters. Because he, he not to get off subject but mm -hmm. he kind of undertook the, the masters from the Beatles. The Beatles was going to buy the Sony masters and and they and and Paul McCourtney uh went over there and asked Michael for some money allegedly, <laughs> and and uh, Mike said he didn't have it. But the next thing you know, Mike had the the rights to all of the of the uh, masters for Sony. And I think and then after that, that's when he started having a lot of problems. Yeah, that's believable. Mm -hmm. Cause look at Bill Cosby; he didn't start having problems till he wanted to go, even though he was doing what he was doing. I ain't saying he wasn't doing it, but. He didn't start having problems 20 years later till he was talking about Brian actually looking NBC. like he might have had the funds and the backing to buy NBC. That's that when all part. that came about. Because mm. before that, that nobody was stunting Bill Cosby. But the mm -mm. minute he get the backing and the corporate the capital up to say, oh, NBC, what it be like? Look what happened. And what did I tell y'all a while ago about how they treat us? Anytime we come up, what do they do? Bring us back to earth because you can't get too big for your riches 
Jay Z, they keep saying he's next. I'm like, okay. Okay, but we do have a question about Charlemagne. Wait, what happened with Charlemagne? But what I want to say one more thing about the about the millennials. I do appreciate the fact that they are the first generation that you can't even uh, step on their toe without them telling it. And so, yeah, they or tell it on you. They're going to whip out their phone, baby. <laughs> what did you say? They, they know, well, they know the number to all other people. Yeah. <laughs> they need to call. They've been well educated on that. And yeah. so I, I applaud that, though. Now, the ones that's not telling the truth, then, you know, don't mess the system up. But I do appreciate the fact that people are talking now because yeah. I think I came in on the end of one of our, uh, somebody in the chat saying that things happened to them and they didn't say anything. Wow. And so, it was wild. I don't think she did. Uh, yeah, and I, I hate that she had to go through that, but uh, it's, I'm, I'm just glad that that little, that little bitty tidbit is kind of turning the tables now. So yeah. not everybody speaking up, but at least a lot of them are speaking up now. <laughs> Now, the rest of them helpers that went out to Bill Cosby and, them and, and Michael Neum and all of that, that's just about money, in my opinion. But what makes it weird for okay. me is the fact that some of them come out, see, and I don't know, it may just be me and my personality, but you come out for money instead of come out for victims. Just you coming money. out for victims or you coming out to heal yourself, money is going to make you heal? Because you can't settle with me if I'm coming out to tell people everything you did to me. We got to get everything you did to me in writing. That's just how I am. And that's what makes me feel weird about it because that's how I am. But see, also some of the things that happen to people, I probably wouldn't have been quiet about either. So I can't say how people going to act. I'm just saying it makes it suspect for somebody like me. That's why you have a lot of people out here just talking crap and banging back at people I get why a lot of people do that because most people don't try to understand how others feel and I get it. But again, me being in that objective spot for so long, I'm just like that now. It's just automatic for me, but I, because I'm all, I'm trying to look at everybody's side, but other people yeah. are just feeling how they feel. That's how we got all these gangs on YouTube now. Where <laughs> we, we need you know. to come back. We need to come back, y'all. Right, right, right. Because she ain't gonna go there. Let's talk about <laughs> these content creators <laughs> crossing the. We gonna dedicate a Friday, Friday. I'm, I'm gonna see what y'all got going on on Friday. Because this every, I was messaging one of my friends earlier. I was like. Maybe, maybe I'm not taking YouTube serious enough. Maybe it's me. I'm second guessing myself because I really be on here <laughs> having fun. Like I right, be telling right, my family, right. I'm, yep. I'm on here with Shane. I'm talking about. They probably be like, I'm so sick of her. She just don't answer the phone for us. She don't be wanting to come. Up. We got something going on. I be like, I, I, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe it's me because I just. I, I, don't well, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. The same crew come back with you, so it ain't just you. <laughs> right. I, right. Don't get right. it. I was like, I don't understand. We got to try it. We got to put this on the table, baby, because I don't know what the hell be going on with these people. Right. Because I'm loving but, it okay, here. Because I see we had a like, question about Charlemagne. Oh Lord. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord. What happened Charlemagne. with Charlemagne the God? What didn't? What didn't? Oh, perv. Right. That part. Well, the Charlemagne, person. there's a young lady out right now that says allegedly he has aid her, and it's not the first or the last one in our, in my opinion. And there's gonna hopefully be some traction with him because I believe she sued him as well. But mm -hmm. she came out detailed. Those were some super. Can I tell her where to go? Where who did it? Um, Lady T Book, you man? Well, oh, it, no, is it the same lady, Shannon? Is it, is yeah, it the same lady? at some point did a case on Charlemagne the God where I didn't watch this SA victim. She gave detail about what he did to her, and that was so much detail that I really believe that young lady. In my opinion, and trending at some point, the the lawsuit on Charlemagne the God and his essay victim, and 
if he did that to that young lady, like she explained it, that wasn't his first or last time. So right. and when people provide a lot of details, I'm tend to believe. Yeah, me you too. know what I mean? Because I can kind of look too. through, you know what I mean? Well, I, I try to be very objective and I like to try to hear both sides of the story. But um, mm -hmm. I also know too that you got these Jerry Jones people allegedly mm -hmm. allegedly and in my opinion mm -hmm. you got a lot of rich and powerful people if they feel like they can benefit and profit from you they're going to protect you right and i think that's what homeboy been getting he's been getting protection and mm -hmm. like shan said he done did if he got caught if he did that to her the way that he you know that it went down he definitely should he should get more time way more time than nesto should get yeah because she she was very graphic and you tc go check that out because that and i'm really and anybody that's ever over here watching us no i'm always the one that's like well what this and this that was so very detailed so right. that was more better more than cassie detailed that was so detailed it was like wow and i felt like that was ingrained and that's why when i say when you coming out coming out for the victims it felt like that yeah. was ingrained in that girl's head and she was doing that for healing not just to get a check and i'm gonna be quiet so yeah, I, I really I can see what you're that. saying, like the difference between what you feel Cassie versus her, mm -hmm. you know. Got yeah, because Cassie didn't come out and really tell us about Holly Weird and this man. We had to wait on everybody else to come. She just gave us a few instances where this girl was very in depth at her situation. Well, do That's you feel like she signed the MDA after once the you know because they did settle. And so sometimes in a settlement they shut you up. Who who well, are you talking about? Who well, said? this is the I'm actual lawsuit portion. The law uh -huh. the lawsuit portion came out for this young. Yeah, lady. we had we had those documents over here, right? I gotta go and look and see. I you think you know. did too. I think you yeah. did something on it, something real quick. You know how you yeah. can get in and get yeah, out. So you didn't get a lot from those <laughs> documents. I'd be like, oh my god, y'all. <laughs> I didn't get the feeling from Cassie's documents as I did the young lady. The yeah. reason being is because for me, I worked with victims and I still, whenever I get a chance to volunteer, which is not a lot these days, will go to the shelter and like take clothes, do stuff, refer people places, give them stuff I'd heard about, stuff like that. But I, I've been around victims, put it like that. And I know all victims are different. I've seen them all walks, all ways. And I feel like even being in the presence as a kid of somebody that was being victimized in front of me and how they moved in now and in their late 60s, I just, for me, don't take the money and run. I feel like I would have felt better about her had she pressed it a little bit. You get what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. though I'm glad all this stuff is coming from it because whatever he doing that got the feds up in there, hopefully they went in right, which I don't really feel like they did, but I hope they did. But I just feel like I felt that girl so. If you go back yeah, and listen to yeah. what she said about Charlemagne, you could tell her hurt. Because they Cassie did have wasn't similar, just they, a check. And they did have similar stories for you know some of the instances that Cassie had. Her and that girl did have kind of a similar story in that sense. And so. Yeah. Um, but the thing, another thing for me too, and how do you feel about this? And this is just my personal thing is that the girl was a teenager that she, and her mama was like, thought he was trying to be like a mentor, if I'm remembering it correctly. And mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. kind of like, dang, he played, he, he, he grown, yeah. you know? He, yeah, but see, yeah. Cassie left. Cassie my whole thing, thing with Cassie, too, listen though, this is my whole thing with Cassie, is Cassie left as an adult, knowing what was happening to her, came back because I'm gonna ruin your career, not necessarily your life, but your career. And I would have walked back in there with the police and the wire on and took control of my own career, but that's just me. Again, at this point, Cassie is not a teenager like the girl that, if I'm not mistaken, Charlemagne, baby girl was a teenager when this happened. Yeah, she was. So she was more innocent. Yeah, Cassie was, was a grown ass innocent. woman. Sometimes I I tend to lend more of a sympathetic heart to 
a teenager or a 19, 20 year old like Cassie was, I'm sympathetic that it started when she was 19. But as that 20 something year old lady that left, he went and got in a whole nother relationship, then you came back. I'm like, Ugh. cause when I came back, if I was scared coming back, I'd have came back with the feds taped to my chest. That's just how I feel about it. Well, but, do you think feds need to come back with a wire too? Who? Surely. Shirley is surely <laughs> complicit, baby girl. Shirley is complicit at this point. She I, really one is. day she complicit, the next day Shirley not compli complicit. So I don't I'm confused on Shirley. But yeah. I feel like only knowing women, like I said, the, the lady that I've known all my life that was victimized uh for decades that went in and out of it, she mm -hmm. moved differently than to and at the end of the day, she took care of her victimizer when he got sick and had a stroke and all this other stuff until he oh, passed God, away. Oh, so God. it's like I know so many situations that sometimes when some stuff happens, it's a little detail about it that kind of throws me off. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, let me tell you why I feel uh, why I have a little bit of sympathy and uh, a little a little bit more grace. Before you other. start, let me tell Miss E. I agree, Miss Miss E. A victim is a victim, and just like I said, the one victim that I know that did it for decades, she came back and took care of him. So it's, okay. it just had me on the fence about a lot of stuff in there. Right, but the reason why come I sympathize with Cassie and can actually um, understand her her her, her, her side of it her side of the story is because I feel like he got Cassie when she was young too. She was 19, 18 or something like that. Cause remember she was in that girl group at first and she mm -hmm. wasn't messing with him then. So he kind of basically groomed her from a teenager all the way up to womanhood. And I feel like he was so rich and powerful that he actually had control over her, uh, way more control over her than he would if she was in her 30s or 40s. I think she would have been thinking a little bit straighter. But she also wanted uh, money and fame. And you know, a lot of our uh, young people just having a bag and that car, you know, just having that lifestyle is, you know, uh, sometimes that's what some of them are reaching for, unfortunately. And so I can understand your point on that as well. But I also believe that it was an intimidation there. And that I, I really feel like that girl was scared for her life because I'm sure, you know, just like him came up missing, you know, and gone, I'm sure she probably felt like she was going to be in that situation also. So that's why I, you know, kind of believe her story too. I believe her story. It's not that I don't believe it. I believe it. But it just, it, I feel different because she left and okay, came right. back as a grown woman. But can yeah. we change the subject because that's a little heavy for me. Right. And, and <laughs> but but and okay, but one more thing about that though. I didn't really, you know, really wake up until my mom passed away when I was like 35. Hey, and I on. think I, I think that's what woke me up and made me really, you know, kind of get grown. But I promise you, I don't feel like I knew much in my twenties and thirties until I had to grow up and you know, had to Lady T Bug know what I'm talking about. Uh when that situation happened to you in your thirties. Yep. You have to grow the hell up because you ain't got nobody else. Yeah, you have, to, you have to start. You have to start I doing it. And I feel like I feel the way I feel because it ain't happened to me. So that's why a lot of times I will back down because mm -hmm. it ain't happened to me. And so I try to keep my opinion to myself, and I only let it go here because I feel like Lady T. Book no, we didn't hear your face. opinion. You know, we you don't just I love to hear your opinion. You see, I be sitting there crazy. Be back laughing again. <laughs> yeah, but I know when something don't happen to you, that's why I can acknowledge that what I'm saying could be totally off yeah. kilter because it yeah. didn't happen to me. Yeah. I'm not really close to nothing. I've only dealt with people that have been through. Yeah, you haven't. You're not. And a, I a, haven't a experienced it. So yeah, yeah. Right. Like it, so so my 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 view on it may be a little distant. So it it it, it can vary. I believe my view is very well off, but that's just my view because I'm distant. You know, well, it can't be y'all if that's what you think and believe is, you know, because everybody, you know, like the YouTube said, everybody got their own opinion and view and thoughts. And so it's appreciate I appreciate you giving us your thoughts like I give my thoughts. Thank you, bro. Y'all showing <laughs> and, out. <laughs> and it is what it is. And so what I'm thinking about is um, 
place. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Jerry, Jerry Jones is real happy that that baby wasn't heels because that baby would came out look like Benjamin Button for real for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking he gonna he gonna have his boys back. He's gonna take care of him. Since he ain't got to take care of little, little Benjamin Button Jr., he ain't got that to oh do now. So he can go ahead and, and invest all the money in the team because, you know, he still got Dak as a quarterback. And he look at it as his money, so he's going to bail him out. That's what I feel. Yeah, like. he's always he's bailing folks out. <laughs> but see, I believe... You want to know what happened? LaDon said what happened with Dak or... two bugs start talking about buddy love over there. <laughs> <laughs> Jack or Diddy, drop drop in the chat and let me know. Y'all, my aunties <laughs> and school me is all love. Yes, Miss E. Right, that's right. Because we, we say what we say over here for real. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what it is. Vicky, what you gotta say, Boo Vicky up here? Oh, Vicky, Vicky, I forgot hey, this. I thought, I thought y'all were talking about the. I don't know nothing about this Dak Dak Prescott thing. Uh, so that's why. Because Lady T Bug broke an exclusive, girl. She got. Yeah, she had an exclusive. I haven't seen anybody talking about this, and out when I called my friend today, I said I've been trying to tell them, but we get so wrapped up in the other stuff, I kind of been putting it on the back burner. But I was like, you know, I wasn't really gonna go lie today. I was like, no, nah, I gotta come. I gotta come and talk about this because I don't see anyone else talking about this. So for the Cowboy fans, we are sorry. Um, but. Long story short, a young lady, Miss Shores, that he had an encounter with in 2017. Then they she said February 2nd on or around February 2nd, so she don't have a definite date, but it's on or around February 2nd. She is claiming that he uh allegedly SA'd her, okay, in in what February? No, in January. Let me right get before he got drafted, way. right before he was, remember he was the number one draft, right before he got drafted. Yes, this would have happened. The SA would have happened right after, you know, he was his rookie year um, quarterbacking over there for Dallas. Was he, was he drafted by Dallas? Yeah, in 2016. Okay. So that was, yep, that was his first, end of his first season. So fast forward from 2017, LaDon, to January 16, 2024, Ms. Shores went and got her attorneys to send him a extortion letter. We will, we, I think we all can agree it's an extortion letter. Basically, oh, a, yeah. a $100 million, $100 million, $100,000. Is he worth that much? A million. Yeah. A million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, like Dave Chappelle said, like Dave Chappelle yeah, said, he don't know nothing. He don't know he nothing. He'd have been able to just raise one. <laughs> he literally, he just signed his uh contract extension for 160 million, but I don't know if that's over, you know, three years, four years, or five years. Four or years. You know, the four years, okay. So, sis was so that 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 stuff that is man. supposed to be worth his whole life, his whole life, uh, his yes, whole off the check. Yep. Maybe she was hoping he would negotiate. No, like, you know, like, let's just throw out a hundred million and he may counter, you know, offer with, with 20 10 million or 12 million or something. Maybe that was her hopes, like, go big and then he'll just see what he's willing to pay. I'm not really sure, but on January 16th, 2024, Miss Shores, you know, attorney reached out to Dax representatives with um exhibit a is what i'm reading from outlining the incident what happened on february 2nd 2017 and pretty much stating that and this is this money will repair her mentally <laughs> i'm just i'm being funny now <laughs> suffering <laughs> from damages a hundred million she feel like this will make her whole okay and in lieu of going to the popo, the police, and pressing charges and publicly embarrassing him, she measured her value with a hundred million. So, what con country is she the queen of? <laughs> <laughs> and then she got it. And then they said gold. 
these your people down in New Orleans, all right? Oh, but what is it yeah, going well. with some diamonds on the side or something? Oh, look, Dak, Dak ain't going into the night quietly, though. That Dak say, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, uh Because yeah. when coaches, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody got a little skeleton in the closet, okay? And he may have done that once if he's guilty. And, you know, the coaches talked to him. And he just never did it again. And, you know, they could see that he was going on the wrong track. And they'll go ahead and clean all that stuff up. But And they'll clean that stuff up for you while you're in college if you're good. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, he was in the NFL. It was his rookie year in the NFL. We know Jerry Jones. We, we know Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones well, no, is going. No, it just came out now. It just came out in January. My Nobody point is, is that Jerry Jones will cover up if if you are of, of value to him jerry jones will cover up whatever he needs to cover up jerry jones he i don't even know to call him a good man or a bad man or what he's just about his his money yeah, and he was all about the dollar he ain't yeah and, and i don't uh, yeah I, I and i look at <laughs> i still laugh at when he who was it was it uh terrell owens when jerry jones i think it Huh? Yeah, I think I think it was I think it was Jerry Jones. He, Jerry Jones took him out to dinner, and he uh, drew a, a circle on the on the on the tablecloth on the paper tablecloth, and he said, "This is this is the team." And then he drew a dot. This is outside the circle. Said, "This is you. You're off the team." <laughs> Jerry Jones is he's a, he's a son of a bitch. Um, but. So she, she, okay, listen, so she doesn't want to go to the police, even though there's no statute of limitations right now, right? There is a statute of limitations in Texas. What's, it's 10 years. Okay, so she can still go to the police. So why not just file charges? This was in, this was in Collins, um, Collins. It was only eight years ago, though, so she still got some time. She's got time. Go for, go for if you if you need justice, go. If you feel so, if you so desire to get justice, ma'am, huh? I'll say he just filed his um. Wait, Dak wasn't playing with her. He said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you know, you gonna come out here trying to make me look bad, going to folk, doing all this." I got he counter. You, you counter sued. He no, is the he, one. Uh, this is his. He filed um, the police report. <laughs> she is the defendant. Her and her attorneys. Okay. Her, her or oh, her attorneys too. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's got All a letter here that look like they. That's got a letter here that look like they pulled it from online. <laughs> so wait, are these attorneys from New Orleans too, Louisiana? No, this is from Texas. Texas. Um, New Orleans. They somewhere so, in the south with that headline they got. But my point is, is like, this is my thing. <laughs> like, the law I'm, office is in Arlington, Texas. Okay. Mm. So I've always been the type, like, I'd rather see, get, I'd rather get justice than, you know, because, huh? I said that's the same thing Sharon was saying. I'd uh, rather get T- justice. T Bug, let me have that. What's the name of that lawyer? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, I I just don't understand. Okay, so long story short, she says that he he he. he said back she's, in twenty seventeen, she assaulted he her. her, and now they her lawyer sent him his people a letter, and he clear fired board. back with a police report and his own law, an extortion he letter to the coach. Yes, yes. She, yeah. they, his her attorney sent him an ex, sent him an extortion letter saying that this much. This is after he sent, renewed his contract, right? Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. That's why I made a point to say that, you know, because we we trying to present the factual things that we do have. And right okay. now, she says that she's been in extensive um, therapy. Therapy. I, if it if it happened, if it happened, I can believe that. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold well, on, Vicky. Let me have the name of that law office. Up. I'll put it in. Mm-hmm. The she she says she's gonna put it in the back chat. So, oh, but if it happens, in the back chat. <laughs> no, I'm putting it up because I already put the documents up here. I actually had the documents up here, um, uh, Vicky. Okay, I'm a, uh, I'll, I'll look at it, but there's no reason to read anymore. If she listen, if you really are a victim and the statute of limitations is statute of statute of limitations is 
still open. Like it hasn't it hasn't run yet. The statute hasn't run yet, and you can file charges. Um, go file charges. Do just like how old, uh, Nicole Brown Simpson's family did. Okay, they went through the legal process, the pro the criminal that process is. first. They didn't get that. They got they went through the civil process. They got that. Yeah. And and now they take whatever they can get from that man. So, if this is the case, I mean, what proof? <laughs> what proof did they bring forth to to say that this happened? Because Mr. Him him with the letter, they just provided him with the letter. Wow. Okay. So that's you know kind of like you know he just had a new baby, right? Yes. So that's kind of how it reminds it sounds like I don't know if yeah, we talked about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I don't know if y'all remember um, mm -hmm. in, in his uh, in his divorce. She kind of she stayed like their last their last date or time together at his house. She kind of staged this fight, this argument with him. And she had her attorneys set up, um, send, send him a letter basically stating I want. Whose music is that? That's not me, is it? It's you. It's, it's like a little kickback, but it went off when I didn't hear it. Say something again, Vicky. Hello. Oh, it sound better. You sound good. Okay. So, um, she had her attorney send him basically an extortion letter. We want use of all four penthouses that that you own, exclusive use. We want you to keep paying the bills. We want the Range Rover. We want this car. We want you to keep paying the bills. Plus, we want fifty thousand dollars a month, or else we're gonna go public saying that you that you hit her. Well, that's pretty much what happened here. But he have his, this this just happened twenty seventeen. You know. I, I don't blame him. Go file a police report. Listen, I mean, if if it if it's true, I mean, let it let it come out in the wash. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but if it's a what, uh, and I'm not even gonna say why wait. But I'm also, I'm asking Miss Ma'am, if you feel like you got a you got a hefty case where you are worth a hundred million dollars, that you feel like this man will pay out a hundred million dollars should. Let me rephrase that. Should pay out a hundred million dollars because I'm looking at her shadow. She got a little nappy ponytail. I don't know. I mean, she, she ain't like just from her shadow. It don't seem like she's a queen. Well, let me tell you this, Vicky. Based on this address or this lawyer office, um, Jerry Law, you gonna gonna eat her up? Well, of course she they are. Her, her law office is in. Uh, I mean, she got a lot of good reviews. Well, the location where she located at. Jerry Jones lawyers tell trust me they're gonna they're gonna be uh they're gonna they're gonna be able it's gonna be like a corporation stepping on an ant. Oh Jerry, God. Jerry well, Jones lawyers market or her clothes. You think she got like a, a Monica Lewinsky? She better have something. Is she? I hope she does. If if this is true, I hope she does. Cause I mean. Because now she's got she's got these big giant huge attorneys that are going to come after her. No, um, she don't. They, they don't. They, it's only one one attorney. Well, she's well, she's probably thinking like Jerry people, you know. Yeah, yeah. she's got. What I'm saying is, uh, the police are going to look into it. I mean, and they could, you know, they they'll they'll file their charges. That's the district attorney's office. But then, uh, Dak. Dak Prescott, his attorneys can come after her for defamation of character and saying these things. As she, I see that they did like an interview. Like there, so I mean, whatever, girl. And one of these, the Cowboys, and 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 her her lawyer is in the same place that um the Cowboys got they don't, and you can rest assured the city is not going to take well to. Yeah, they not. Yeah, you know the South is like football. Um, I mean, I don't know because like I said, this been uh he filed this document on March eleventh and I haven't seen anyone talking about it. They, yeah. I mean, first they probably don't want him making statement or comment on it. Oh uh, yeah, of course not. Like, I mean, they don't content creators. <laughs> is he being yeah, like Green Acres Nim? He ain't telling all his business on the phone like the motor folks is. Is he married? <laughs> on the recorded line. Is the, is the uh, Dak Prescott married? 
I'm not sure. I do know that he, um, because we went through his IG earlier, and mm -hmm. he, um, you know, he had, you know, the baby shower stuff. You know, his, um, the kid and the in the mom, you know, over there. But um, is she blind? Let me guess. <laughs> Bitch, we already went through all of that now. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I don't even. I mean, I just look at the guy. I'm like, no, she looks like in the car, no. So they were were they in college together? This did this university is the college? What's what's it? What school in Mississippi? In Dak's defense, his mom is blonde, was blonde. What what school in Mississippi? Mississippi State. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. He, oh, okay. It's a good school. I see. Y yeah, he got drafted. So he didn't play yet until 2017, I believe. So this was before he started playing, I believe. Because when is the draft? Isn't it in the spring? Y'all yeah, asking late T-Bug a lot of questions at one time. I don't know when the draft is. I, yes. <laughs> like she AI. AI, tell them now. That's funny, y'all crazy. I mean, to be okay, to he graduated in December. Me, he graduated in December of 2014. So and then he he still played. And then he got his uh his uh masters in 2015. So oh, yeah, she had she wrote him a letter when? At the same time? T Bug can tell you when she wrote the letter. The letter to the from the attorneys? That was January 16th, 2024. Okay, so generally speaking, guys, if 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 a um Vicky, sorry, he was supposed to they gave him a deadline to respond by February 16th. And then he found he's fine with a lawsuit. <laughs> Watch it later. <laughs> so, you know, men who have who what men who have. have the, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was, I was just gonna saying what a response. Go ahead, Vicky. I was just saying that was his response to lawsuit. Yeah, and the I mean, police report. So I ain't gonna be going back and forth with y'all. We can handle all this in court. Men who have these kind of like men and women who have these kind of propensities for um, or desires, they tend to have a pattern with them and they don't, you know, they do it more than once. They don't. They, I, and this is just I like when I say tend to, I mean, the pet, you know, that that's usually the norm. They do it more than once. And it's not just, OK, well, I did it this one time. I didn't like it. You know, no, they get a power rush. They get a, they get a, you know, they get excited off of doing it. So, if she's the only one, what, now what's going to be the, the the killing part is if other women come forward. Now, if other women come forward and say, well, yeah, around that time he was doing it, to, he did it to me too, or he did it to me. It's just I just find it funny that ma'am came for the whole salary, Definitely. and like. Okay, I mean, I guess I don't know. I mean, some people, <laughs> some people, I don't know. I ain't got. No, I, I'm just gonna let it come out because I just find it. I'm like, you, you coming for a hundred million dollars? Now I mean, to you answer your question, when he was drafted, <laughs> April twenty eighth, the draft was held April twenty eighth, two thousand sixteen. Through April thirtieth, two thousand sixteen. Right, I knew it was in the springtime. Some sometime because they got to give him time to to practice. So well, I, well, well. I mean, why was y'all talking about Nesto when I came up here? That's why I jumped up here. And we've, went, been hey, about, we've been talking about. We've been talking about. We went live at what six fifteen. So we been we talked about Diddy. We talked about Russell Simmons. We talked about Portia and Simon. Then we talked about that. Then we started just talk. You know, they came up. They said they pieced, and then we started talking about. We don't talk about talking about, about Buffy. 
Buster. Yeah, we talked about segregation. We talked about busting. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? <laughs> why is so? Why is Portia? Why y'all think Portia up in there going up in that man's house with guns and whatnot? <laughs> what happened? She was trying to go get her stuff. She may have left. She may have left the. Uh, what them bags is them them double Birkin, digits out of She may have left one of her Birkins up over there. Like Ninja, get my Birkin, and then I'm up out of here. What what That's happened? Portia broke in Simon's house. She pulled up with the goons, baby. They they had they pow pow. Simon so had to call the police. Oh you lord! Was you was late. Yeah, we talked about that at the uh, opening, the beginning, and her family uh, was turning off the security cameras. Yes. They had it all mapped out. They yeah, probably they drew up the house. But you know what? They still ain't told us what for, which means Simon got something or did something, and Portia called the people, and they's coming to take him away. I thought he was supposed to be deported anyway. And they was going to deport him, all right. The police. She should have called Homeland Security to come pick him up. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> all his warrants, his warrants ain't under Gabadia, right? Like they wouldn't know his war he, he got a whole new identity. Simon knows what to do. Simon because all Simon gotta do is go is is call the police. It's like I should be able to stay in this country because I'm being domestically abused. <laughs> I'm Here a victim. No, anytime they go to jail, I just I be watching court cases all the time, especially here in Texas. And we got this lady in San Antonio, and what they'll do is they'll make him do his time and then they'll deport him after he finished. But you can also you can you can also uh, if if you can prove that you're a victim of a uh, what's it domestic a domestic uh, abusive situation I lie on that bitch every day. <laughs> but the family got no, his, the family got his own victims that he got to deal with, so that ain't gonna apply for him. He, I'm telling you, they gonna put him on that on that plane. Time is he funny. He said already I'm in order, plane. So he can't. Simon said y'all shouldn't let me. That's oh, the we thing know. about this country. Once you deny, you you can't. Ain't no, hey. Only way you can come back is something like that. But it gotta happen over there, not over here. Simon <laughs> said, "Y'all shouldn't have let me in the country in the first place." But I'm here now, yeah. so let me stay. He here, I'm he saying, keep coming back. They put him out. He come back. Well, I'm, well, I'm saying, saying is, he's gonna get him. reinvent himself and come back. <laughs> well, he gonna get him. He gonna get him a free trip to Africa in a minute, though. He keep playing with them them people. He should have gave Portia what she wanted because now once these people involved, I'm telling you, he's gonna be getting on the spirit plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we've so been all good. over the place, uh, Vicky. You I, know how we do it. I know. I just I would it, mess around with with final thoughts. You know. <laughs> to, to to touch on that Diddy thing, I'm um I'm really I'm not I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised um that I'm I'm surprised that it's Homeland Security and and um. Another federal agency. I why? I'm just I don't know because I just. Well, why would he be involved though, Shane? Homeland Security. I don't. It's a I task force for the for the age trafficking. It's a task force. That's that's who does those cases. That's who does those investigations. That's who looks for the people and all that. The age age trafficking task force, and it's the feds and the home Homeland Security because Homeland Security has. A little bit more reach than everybody else. All the alphabet. So they got jurisdiction their everywhere. Task force. Yeah, it's their task force. Them and the feds. It's their task force. That's why it's all over the country popping off at one time because it's them and their task force. They got together, planned this. That's why I said this didn't happen last week. This didn't happen yesterday. They planned this. That's why either they planned for him to be away when they ran up in his spot in three different places in the country, or either. They told him and he left. Either way, I've never seen it go down like this and he don't come out in bracelets. That's the problem that I'm having because he should have came out in bracelets. And he well, did it. So that lets me know they don't have anything they fishing. Well, they bought Rudy Giuliani out in his drawers. So he was made exactly. in that part. Part. And so I, I believe what you're saying. You know, something got to be up with it for it to happen, for it to go down like this. So either they got everything they need and they was just doing show, or they ain't got nothing and they got. But see, the but thing why is, you talk about nothing though, because you know the Fed normally don't get a. They don't normally come get you until they got all their eyes dotted and T's crossed. 
but they may have somebody on the inside. You need to see how all these inside people is saying stuff. That's right. enough for a warrant. And see, that's why I said it's a little fishy for me because even though that's enough for a warrant, the feds would be like, we ain't finna waste our time on that. So that's why I'm like, is for it to be what they doing, either they had to think somebody was in there now that something's being done to, or they didn't have nothing and they had, they just cause so many, they getting so much flag that they had to respond. Cause they mm -hmm. will do that sometimes too, to get people off their back, just respond depending on who the people is that's on their back. So it's, it's either left or right. And you can't really call it till they tell us what they got. And they ain't gonna tell us what they got for another six months or so. So, Well, my final thought is I believe uh, he got so many victims like Nesto do. And so um, we don't really know who empowered that's been, t been talking about it also, you know, we don't, you know, we don't know who don't told, who don't been up there talking to them people. Cause you know, it's a lot mm -hmm. of, it's a lot of people that they claim that he may have some access to, or in my, uh, allegedly like Jamie Foxx come up sick and the boy daddy come up sick, I'll be sure. And um, you know, a lot of people come up almost down, you know, almost not here no more. And so we don't, I don't really know who been talking to him or whatever, but you know, now I, I'm not in the police force or nothing, but I'll be, I watch a lot of TV and, Based on TV, they always have their eyes dotted and their T's crossed when they come when they when they get ready to come get you. And like you said, it could have been somebody that was in an emergency situation also at maybe all three locations because you never know what he's doing, who he's doing, mm -hmm. and how he's doing it. And that's it. Okay. Buddy love. It struck again. Oh, and I wish Dak luck in, in Benjamin Button Jr. and <laughs> I mean, I wish everybody look on that <laughs> because I believe that's his baby. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> did you see like um Trump got a reduction on his bond? Girl, I know, you know, they definitely want this dude to uh run and you know not get caught up or whatever, and that's fine, you know. Uh, I think they they know he ain't gonna win, so they're gonna get him out of the election, so he can, you know, they they can take him quietly. Okay. You think he gonna win? That, I don't no. Know. no, he ain't gonna. That's why I said they know he's not gonna win. That's why I said you. I, I I I personally I do I think he's gonna win honestly, um, but that's I just me too, because, because people out here thinking like I said what I said and they ain't gonna go vote and he gonna win. No, nah, I'm I'm going to go vote. But, no, uh, I'm saying they thinking what you just said that oh. he's gonna win. He 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 gonna win. He ain't gonna oh, okay, win. Yeah. So they gonna think he ain't gonna win and ain't gonna go vote. Them people, not you. Them people I, gonna not go vote. Yeah, so gonna win. the reason why I feel like he's not gonna win because he's not trying to add to his party and he don't have no money. Which he didn't have a lot of money the first time he won. But what he is doing is he's pushing people out. If you not. You know, with uh, MAGA, then you he don't he really don't want you in the party. So that's how he rolling. He gonna the, win that's why the, the toy says she thinks he's gonna win too. The thing about him is that he has always been a great brander. Um, right. He's always been good at branding himself, and whether he's competent or not, whether you think he's racist or not, um, he's he was able to get his message out there. He's he he's he's a bully and he's belligerent and people enjoy that. Yeah. So when you have to think that although there's and to be fair, a lot of black people that I talk to are switching or turning the tides on the Democrats. They, they just are. they they kind of just sick of it and you know they they leave us in this either or kind of situation when it comes to voting. It's like this one or this one, this old man or this old man, and. The Democrats are putting us in a situation where it, it's a it's a candidate that we don't like. Again, we didn't like Hillary. Joe Biden doesn't he can't tie his shoes no more. I mean, don't say we say you. I like Granddaddy Joe. I don't know. I didn't see why. At the end of why? the day, at the end of the day, if you wanna, at the end of the day. Oh, sorry, sorry y'all. We sorry. I mean, I ain't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to put that out there. Y'all know I'm different, but no, I'm sorry. I understand. I, I just, it, 
I, I look at him and I, I think about my my grandfather and I, I'm like, goodness gracious, the, the man, he don't be knowing where he's at half the time. And I, I just, I don't, I, I, I feel, I feel, I think it's elder abuse to keep putting him up there and doing this dog and pony show. But I he just think do it he don't know what he want to do. He like he no, knows he's like who gonna do it? Who who? They had, that, that Kamala Harris is the one that they have as a backup. Kamala Harris. Well, she doing it now anyway. Then if he if he ain't if he sleep at all, then what you right. if you did But at the end of the day, you know this is you know Lady Tebow really don't like politics. I know, so I'm do. just but yeah, I, but my point is is that man. he was just but he just good at branding. Thing is to vote. Period, and that's this. Yeah, it is. Whoever yeah. you want to vote for, you know. He but, just um, right. If I you just, want a dictatorship, vote orange. If you yeah. want a regular old granddaddy, democracy ship, yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. That's the point. Dictatorship orange. Granddaddy yeah, I just, I mean, he take a nap all day and, and let us have democracy. Then the, the, the <laughs> you know, then the, then the, then the, shut, the then shut YouTube down because you don't like what YouTube said about you. That's all it is, you know. That, I just, I want a is. popular third option. That's all I want is I want a pop. We'll I want a pop. You ain't gonna get that option. though. That ain't the choices right now. So it's a, it's a, it's it's really dire emergency. But anyway, dictatorship, grandpa ship. I yeah. take grandpa ship. I take grandpa ship. <laughs> Yeah. So, I can still say, so I can still live up to my name on YouTube. I said what I said. Well, well I'll, I'll end off on this. I wasn't here for all, everything y'all said, so I I um I missed out on quite a bit. Um, right. Where you been at, girl? Red well, because I, back, huh? Red ball it back. Red ball it back. Where you yeah. been? Where you been? Oh, we were talking. To, uh, I said what I said. My both were talking to uh, what's her name, Kelly's wordy reaction. Yeah, but when Kelly left, I pr I promptly came over here. I went to sleep. I took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> like the grandma that you is. Like the grandma. That I took a nap. Oh, Wait a minute. No, you didn't. Oh, Hold up. I sure did. Hold up. Hold up. So you taking a you taking a nap with the president then? <laughs> yep, I sure am. And I ain't nobody's president. I never want to be nobody's president. I don't be nobody's executive unless well, it's man, my company. Can take a nap while he can't take one. He weren't going to be you. That, no, he don't. That man, that man where eats his ice cream. He eats his ice cream and he and he and he rides his bike. Um, I told him. I don't know if you was on, but I told him we got to come back on Friday and talk about this content. <laughs> In general, like this is getting out of hand for me. Oh, with Ms. the uh, Ms. 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 my life the YouTube code, the YouTube code. <laughs> Oh, we talking that's about. That's why you can't. That's why you can't get monetized, uh, Lady B T Bug. That's why you can't get monetized. <laughs> no, I be doing stuff on my. She head. ain't interested no, in the cult. That's why she. Ain't wait, you, oh. I'm like, I don't give a damn if I get one subscriber a, a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Can you? I can I? Let me. These people. I don't know what they be. <sighs> can I ask you? Are you talking about WD and? Uh, GW everybody girl, it's all over the place. We just girl, everybody, everybody, everybody tripping, Vicky. Everybody. See, it, it's a, like it ain't okay. enough red meat, Vicky. Like it ain't enough uh beef sausage for everybody on on the damn place. I'm I really I it okay. So I'm I try to be like spread it out, you know, amongst everybody. I noticed uh the, the copycat nature of Mm -hmm. WD. I'm like, oh, okay, this is. Mm -hmm. I noticed it early on, but again, that lady ain't never done nothing to me, so I can't. Just like with Sylvia, I'm like, I don't like, I don't like the stuff that you're doing. Um, I don't. I, I really, I just cut off, cut Sylvia off on that period. Like I, you know, I click on her every now and then. I, but I, you know, with WD, I just was like, okay, maybe she's just trying to find her footing. You know, she's it's like they, it's, it's like dating a boyfriend, Charlie. Everybody see who's zooming who. Everybody sleeping with everybody's man. So yeah, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, they. I mean, it, we're gonna ha we have to because we have to come back and talk about it because it, it, it's it's I don't I don't do the cult shit like I, I really don't. I'm like I'll just stop watching everybody, and I'll move on to something. I was like, I really, Vicky, because you missed this part, I already told them and uh, Auntie when they were up here. I was like, I really come on here to have fun. I feel like I'm having fun. So I was like, it's something wrong with me because I 
I just stay over here in my lane. Y'all know I do mod for other content creators, but they don't Child, you got some self esteem. You got own. some you got some self esteem and life and so and a and a you know whole uh another life that you live. I think it's these people who ain't got you know that this is their life. And so I think it makes a difference when this is their life or livelihood. Well, when you like oh I think oh yeah, when you have um when you have an income outside of YouTube, it helps to that you don't have to like focus on this and be in, you know, it, it just this be be your kind of like your primary personality. Um, or you know, you have to worry so much about your image and what and like protecting your image. You 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 know, it is different. You know, it hits different when you when you have like, you know, you you're still in your career and you're still like, you know, popping off over there you can come you can just come here and have fun and then if you feel like if you feel like making some money eventually you will monet you know you will monetize um this the stuff that's going on over there I, I i like i said i know i commented i'm like i noticed it 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 i noticed it early on that i just thought again once i said like i said last night to them i really just thought that the girl is just trying to find her footing and she she likes Nyla, um, to the point where she likes her, her style. Um, now, there were people on there who I were. Now, I didn't know what was going on because I'm not. I'm not. Y'all know I'm not behind no walls and all that. Right. I, I say I can say it right here. You know, if you hear, you hear. If you don't, you don't. But um, I was at work board today, and I was like, okay, well, I'll go listen to this person. But then when I looked in the chat. I was like, what the hell going on? <laughs> you know, because I was like, then I saw a post about, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what these people got going on. So I didn't. Well, like I don't like when they try to when they try to bring it over to Fran's channel because they Fran ain't trying to. She's like, I ain't got nothing to do with it. She's I just. I, and Fran's saw, always been that way. I've been modding for Fran for about four years now, so Fran's always been that way. And then I saw a post today that just kind of like, this is how I feel about things. It says, sometimes queens just stay quiet, sit back, and watch the actions of people they're about to cut off. And that's how well, I feel. Um, the way I feel is, I just want to watch, I just want to see what this fool is doing and how he going to uh, get his cheeks unclenched <laughs> and, and, and see what his wife going to do. <laughs> you know, is she going to, you know, uh, go on with her life or or uh, or crawl back in to the gutter with him and 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 poor Sonya, she got you know she just her five minutes of fame have faded out and so i i just don't know what i don't know what she gonna do i guess she gonna just go ahead and move to africa <laughs> i don't think i don't think she real oh farrakhan okay Sonya don't realize that when they post videos up of her they really be throwing her a bone like they throw her like a, a bone of of um what's the right word no, like relevance you can't throw nobody no bone that think they know everything sweetie that's true and she do think she know it all well she don't she i mean she is not um she ain't you know we know that but I, my point is uh, you know i to just touch on that, like you just let me know what time we we gonna do that because I do want to talk about that. I just I know I started noticing some some cultish with first with Sylvia then with it, that shit and I'm just like oh, okay I'm gonna have to back off. You don't have to do like Shane because Shane taught me. Uh, you don't have to be their friend, but go there and get that valid that valuable information that they have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I absolutely. Didn't learn the things last night. <laughs> um, but then like um. As far as the the this guy Dak Prescott goes, um, I don't know. I hope it just whatever the truth is, it comes out in the wash. Did he? I I just uh, you know all I gotta say is then any boo boo aha uh -huh. and because um I'm I'm so I look at Craig Mack, look at uh, Black Rob, all those and Mace Mace went Mace had to go join the church twice. He ran to the church twice to to get away from Diddy. The locks had to go on the radio station. And beg Diddy to, to release them, and then Diddy want to come. You know, he a couple years he want to change his name to Brother Love, and then come back around. And 
um, give everybody their publishing back after they after he's made after he's squeezed out all the lemon juice from the lemon. He wants to give give them something that they can't make money off of anymore. Now that streaming is is a part of the, the factor, they can't make money off of CDs. They can't make money, you know, off of off of print sales and everything. They can only make money off of touring. Most of these people are too old. He did. He kind of deserves what's ha this bad. Even if nothing comes out of this, did he? Maybe his karma. You know, like sometimes you don't know when it's gonna come. You know what I mean? Like you may be done straightening up, done join the church, paying your tithes, serving. You know, doing this, and then bam, you know, here's your karma. Yeah, he he's just not. A, he he does not. I won't say he's not a good person because I don't know him. Um, can y'all still hear me? Okay, but from everything I heard, I've read and I've heard about him, he is um, not a good person. So I'm just happy that it's finally, um, it's finally coming back out. You know, it's finally coming around that he, he is, he's getting what he's getting what he he deserves. And what was the last? Oh, yeah, I don't know what y'all said about Nessa. Sony was just crackheadish. Oh, we were just. Talking about random stuff, you know, we pretty much had already wrapped up. Uh, yeah, Miss E, Audrey already, um, Audrey already done made a, a statement. I saw it while I was on his, um, looking for something else we was talking about. She already done made her statement, baby. <laughs> Who is Audrey? Oh, oh Danny the King. Oh, she, she said she's gonna stay in the chat. Okay. Shan, your last thoughts, my love, before we get off of here. I will say that that deserves his day in court. Yep. And I am here for it because that's the one thing that needs to start happening. And when somebody is making a false claim, they'll think about it twice. And I'm just glad that Buddy Love is coming down, but I really hope they doing it right because in my experience, the if the Fed don't want to do something, they just jump out there and half do it. They say, "Oh well, we did what you asked." Mm -hmm. We but, investigated, you know. Right. So I need Buddy Love to really go on, come down for what he's been doing, and I need Dak to get his just do as well. And what else did we talk about? Oh, nasty Nesto and Shirley. <laughs> I can't wait. To see Charlay get her divorce while he's sitting up there in them there people's penitentiary. Yes. And when is his court date? In April. We have no idea. Fulton playing with us. They putting the website up a, a pixel at a time. <laughs> Not a pixel at a time, girl. <laughs> a pixel at a time. They playing with us. They putting. They know we watching, so they putting it up a pixel at a time. They playing with us. Um, and we ain't got Sonya to tell us when the next court date is no more, so yeah, I don't know. She told us about the um the right. add on. She told about the one Monday. So what, what was this? There's one on I Monday. I can't wait to come talk about the coach because I I'm gonna surprise y'all. I'm gonna say some stuff. I'm I'm gonna say some stuff. Okay. I'm gonna say okay. Some stuff. Okay. Miss E already put I'm, it out there, baby. This is a space baby. <laughs> I'm gonna say some stuff because I've been in these streets. I've been on YouTube for over ten years when they started this, bro. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some stuff and some people going to be mad. Hopefully they never see it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vicky, we don't know when his next court date was. I thought he had one this week. I, I know they just said when the, the last court hearing that I watched um, was they said April. That's well, no, she he originally had a court date scheduled in March, but remember he had the add-on, so I don't know if that add-on replaced because I thought he had one this week. Um, you know, in for a, a, one of those bond things for one of those other charges, but um, the indictment that's supposed to go down in April, but of course we do not have a date on it. And the court date would just be for another bond reduction. Yeah. Why they keep I wonder, just, can we find out what's on the grand jury? No, we can't. It's secret. I forgot. We can't find out what the grand jury got scheduled because it's secret until they make their decision. What I don't understand is what... Okay, so they got they got hacked by ransomware, right? Like, that's what it was. You guys, you know that's true that they did... 
Well, they did get hacked because I went on the website and I clicked on something and my computer started going haywire and I had to get it fixed. So I do believe that now. I, at first, I was like, they lying. But now I believe it. Because <laughs> it kicked me out of our live one day because I was my computer just started opening up stuff. And I was like, oh, snap. And I just turned it off. So and that's what I was doing that day. I was all up through trying to figure out what was going on with food. So I believe it. Now they got to spend money on getting the website repaired. Yeah, they no, they going a the whole new website, girl. They got a whole new thing, a whole new thing going on now, but it's not fully up yet. All right, ladies. All right, y'all. Thank you for letting me come up. Um, yeah, schedule it. Let me know what time what time is gonna be for. Yep, I'll um, watch out for that thumbnail. <laughs> Miss e said me too. I've been here for a long time. Miss E said she the hardest working mod out here. Oh Lord. Okay, Miss E, thank you for your services, honey. It's like the military. <laughs> 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 Good night, Shan. Good night, Bye, guys. All right, y'all. Bye.